welcome to the Village of Southampton Planning Board Combination Public Hearing and Work Session meeting for Thursday, April 20th, 2023. Can I get a motion to open the meeting? I'll move to open the meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, let's begin. Um, first thing on our agenda is a, the public hearing for 550, 554 Hill Street, LP. No. And we have Mr. Bennett. <laughs> Thank you. Ready to go. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Bennett, and I'm a uh, partner at Bennett and Reed. Bailey Larkin, another lawyer in the firm, is with me this evening, as is Vince Gordiello. Always a pleasure to work with the Rainer Group. What you have before you is the map that the Zoning Board of Appeals approved, which is identical to the sketch plan. And I wanted to leave it there so everyone could see it. So the ZBA approved all the relief that was necessary uh, to give this through to create two lots that don't have fee road frontage, but rather gain their access via easement. Uh, this is the map, the very map that was approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's identical in lot configuration to the plan that's presently before the board. And the ZBA decision stated, the proposed subdivision will result in better shaped lots having areas of 23,070 square feet, 48,284 square feet, and 51,771 square feet, respectively. Lot 1 will front directly on Hill Street, which it does. Lot 2 will gain access to Hill Street via a 20-foot wide access easement along the easterly side, lot, so easterly side of Lot 1, and Lot 3 will gain access to Captain's Neck via 25-foot wide access easement along the southerly side of the adjoining property located at 61 Captain's Neck Lane owned by an affiliate of the applicant. The ZBA has set the zoning for this area and granted all relief to permit the use of access easements. It's a Pavone case uh, versus Planning Board, Town of Huntington, uh, which I've given to you uh, previously uh, and in that case, the court, I'm directly quoting, prior to seeking approval for their preliminary sub subdivision and plat, the petitioner obtained the approval necessary from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Therefore, the lots with the approved variances were conforming when they appeared on the subdivision map. Um, also, a case Thurman versus Holohan. After the Zoning Board of Appeals made its determination on petitioner's applications, it was improper for the Planning Board to reconsider the issue of conformity with the zoning ordinance. So really, other than the uh, drainage, which is, I'm going to tell you about where we've come with that, uh, and indeed, I'm going to read you a letter where it appears even that the objectance engineer has agreed that we're conforming in terms of drainage. Um, but other than that, uh, all the objectance arguments have been uh, about items that were before the Zoning Board of Appeals, before the Supreme Court, uh, and have been decided and are outside of everyone's pr purview. The ZBA decision binds this board. That decision was upheld by the Supreme Court, Suffolk County. The arguments raised by the opposition as it relates to access via easements uh, and the legality of that were raised before the court. The Supreme Court stated in its decision when it was going through the um, claims of the petitioner, the objectants, Quote, the ZBA, they claim the ZBA improperly approved two landlocked lots by approving street access for lots two and three that relied on establishing illegal accessory uses on adjoining property. That's been one of the claims here. That's, they made that claim in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court did not accept these arguments. Quite candidly, this whole conversation about access on a map and the easement access and the the two lots not, not having street frontage, um, uh, fee street frontage, are arguments which you should have told the petitioners, in my opinion, uh, rather the objectants, you don't want to hear this, that's all over. That's all over and done with. But you've entertained them, uh, I can't do anything about that. I think, uh, with all respect, it's been improper to even entertain these arguments. They've been litigated time and time again. And not, this is res judicata, it's collateral estoppel. Not only does it bind anybody in a lawsuit against the Zoning Board of Appeals, but as you can see, it, it, it binds people in subsequent actions by in, in front of sister agencies. So the court hasn't accepted these arguments. The driveway is allowed whether or not we're proposing minor alterations in grade to address, address grading and drainage. That's what this board does. That's what you do. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like uh, literally I'm on another planet. 
oh, we can't do that because this, because that makes it somehow illegal. That's a structure. That's what the planning board does. And that's what the zoning board properly recognized that you were supposed to work out, the drainage. And Vince Gordiel is here, but um, by the designated April 3rd, 2023 deadline, we submitted alternate drainage plans that meet or exceeded the requirements articulated by the village engineer. The plans submitted are consistent with the March 2023 sketch driveway drainage comparison plan. But this is, I have to really, and this, I don't think that uh, people will try to argue that this is, didn't mean what he meant, or that didn't mean what he, what, he, what, he, what he said, but I have to um, actually uh, commend uh, Mr. Kiefer at H2M, who's the objectance engineer, in the last letter of his Mar last p p sentence of his March 31, 2023 letter uh, to you, Mr. Piazza, he says, on March 20th, 2023, the Rainer Group issued a sketch entitled driveway drainage comparison plan, 25 foot right away, drawing number C-2.2, which modifies the proposed drainage system for the driveway between Captain's Neck Lane and Lot 3. It increased the number of dry wells to 11 and increased the diameter and depth of the dry wells for greater capacity. The calculation for the modified drainage system utilized a five inch rainfall and runoff coefficient of 2.0.25 for landscape areas, which is appropriate. The plan provides adequate drainage an adequate drainage system for tributary area C. That's the thing that all this has been about, with storage capacity in excess of 6,006 ,006 cubic feet. So we had submit that the previous plan submitted was more than adequate, but if the board prefers the plans and the engineer, your engineer prefers the April 3rd plans, we'll institute that plan as well. It's up to you. We'll do either one. Either one complies. We'll do either one. We're agnostic about that. Any question as to whether or not 62 Captain X Lane was previously contemplated, as is claimed by the objectants, you know, this wasn't part of the application. Again, the Zoning Board of Appeals decision specifically says that Lot 3 will gain access along the side of a property owned by an affiliate of the applicant. Mr. Zahusky was here. This, this is just really, you know, really, you know, grasping at straws. The negative declaration adopted by this board stated two homes, two of the homes will be accessed from Hill Street and the third via a right of way through a property which runs on Captain's Neck Lane. All disclosed. The access driver over 62 Captain's Neck Lane has and always has been considered and any suggestion to the contrary is belied by the record. Just one more citation and Greenville Fire District uh, versus Town of Greenberg, the petitioners appealed a special permit granted by a town board and also appealed a prior adoption of a conditional negative de declaration issued by the Zoning Board of Appeals. In dismissing the proceeding, the appellate division noted under the doctrine of res judicata, a party may not litigate a claim where a judgment on the merits from a prior action between the same parties involved the same subject matter. This rule applies not only to claims actually litigated, but to claims that could have been raised. And the Supreme Court properly determined the branch of the petition which was to review the ZBA's issuance was barred. This Zoning Board of Appeals decision, the negative declaration and the sketch plan approval cannot be disturbed. I've looked at Mr. Gobler's comments time and time again about his nitrogen, concern about nitrogen. What he wants you to forget is the Suffolk County Department of Health Services Bureau of Wastewater Management has approved this plan. They're the agency that is, um, they're the agency that is charged with regulating uh, wastewater uh, in the county of Suffolk and, and thus in the village of Southampton. They're approved with uh, charged with approving subdivisions. Uh, Mr. Gobler may think in a perfect world there should be a higher standard, but that's not the standard. And the Suffolk County Health Department has approved the map. Um, so I think the board has heard enough, given everybody adequate time to present this case, that's for sure. Um, and I just have to say, I, let's assume for the purposes of argument, you think this, this is the, you personally think this is the worst subdivision plan, personally. You don't subjectively, you don't like it for whatever reason, for density, whatever, even though there's, there's three uses there, we're, getting, we're going to three uses, one of the two, two residences, one 
uh, light industrial use, we're going to three residential uses. So let's, for some reason you don't like it. The question you have to ask yourself is why you were put on this board, and you were put on this board to follow the law. There's no getting around it. There's no getting around it. So let's assume you don't like the plan. The question is not whether or not you subjectively like the plan. The question is whether or not under the law, under the code, under the, under the case law, under the Zoning Board of Appeals decision, which has been upheld, under the standards which you're supposed to use to review the things like drainage, whether or not this application should be approved, then it should be. Let's assume you don't like it. It doesn't matter. I hate to be that frank about it. It doesn't matter. The question is under law whether or not you should approve it. So I, I don't see, unless somebody can tell me <laughs> some good, really good reason why this shouldn't be approved at this particular part, given this, the sketch plan approval, the ZBA approval, the litigation, all the drainage work that we've gone through. I hate to say it, but you know, sometimes like jurors, you're charged with making decisions which are uncomfortable. Uh, you have to approve this. I don't, I, don't, I don't see any way that you can't do anything but approve it respectfully. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you, John. So, Kathy, the, <coughs> the, the drainage is all quote unquote good now, right? Like the conditions that, that we, not the conditions, but our concerns have been met. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defer to Scott Reisinger, who's on Zoom, who's the uh, village engineer for this project. Are you there, Scott? Is he there? He, he is. I see Alan's joined the meeting as well. I didn't know if, I didn't realize that. Okay. Scott, are you able you to? Hear? Yes, go ahead. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, from my review of the drainage, um, it's Attorney just stated uh, in the neighbor's um, engineer, Mr. Keffer, uh, they have changed their design and met all of the criteria that we have asked of them at this time. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, is there, is there anybody else in the public that wants to speak? Uh, good afternoon. My name is Linda Morglin of the firm of Morglin Sunder. I represent several of the neighbors of uh, this parcel, the owners of 22 Captain's Neck, of A65 Captain's Neck, and uh, 48 Captain's Neck, and the owner of the large parcel on the other side, Minton A. Marie IV. Um, your counsel will guide you, of course, on what the legal issues are here. Um, I'm not really here to do that. We've stated our position in various letters and I know the board has them to consider. I'll just say that Mr. Bennett and I differ fundamentally on whether this board has discretion to depart from the approved sketch plan. And respectfully, I think he's wrong. I think he's wrong because in the law there is a difference between how the planning board is required to behave if it approves a preliminary subdivision plan, if it approves a sketch plan. If you approve a preliminary subdivision plan and request changes and the applicant makes the changes, then essentially you're bound to approve the final subdivision if it follows the original preliminary subdivision plan. A sketch plan does not carry with it that element of preclusion. While I understand it might be very frustrating to the applicant, if this board thinks that the sketch plan does not represent the best plan for subdivision of this property, even though it approved it, even though that's what the applicant went to the ZBA with, this board has the discretion to do more with the subdivision. In my opinion, you're not bound. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you.
Good evening, Mr. Chairman and uh, board members. My name is Jeff Bragman. I represent Eric Ruttenberg. Um, the, uh, I wanted to start <coughs> by responding again uh, to Mr. Bennett's misdescription of the two cases uh, that he's constantly hammered the board with, uh, the Th uh, Thurman case and Pavone case, which he uh, is incorrectly uh, asserting tie your hands and prevent the planning board from acting because the zoning board uh, granted variances. In fact, neither of those cases stands for that principle. Um, in both of those cases, what happened is applicants went to the zoning board uh, for variances for subdivisions. The zoning board granted uh, dimensional variances for the lots, at which point both of the applicants returned to the planning board. And I should pause at that point uh, to say that that alone shows that you have a role in this case that's different from the zoning board. If you, did, if you didn't, if all you could do was rubber stamp the zoning board, you, they wouldn't have to return here for any kind of review. What could you review? What happened in both of those cases is that the planning board uh, looked at the lots and said, oh, they're non-conforming, so we're not going to approve the subdivision. That is something that this board could not do. You can't look at the lots as to which variances were granted and say, well, we're not going to grant a subdivision because those lots are non-conforming, uh, because the, the zoning board is empowered to act on that. But what you can do, and in fact, what it is your responsibility to do, your obligation to do to protect the community, is to apply the separately applicable uh, planning board standards. Um, th the zoning board's action in no way undercuts uh, or uh, voids or vacates the standards that you have to look at when you look at a subdivision. Um, and in fact, not even CEQA does that. Not, not even uh, a prior uh, negative declaration that was made on, an, on the incomplete sketch plan can do that because CEQA uh, announces in its regulations that it doesn't change the jurisdiction, the powers of local review boards. It doesn't change them. So the, the only thing that a negative declaration does uh, mean is that another board can't uh, request an environmental impact statement. And that, that's all the negative declaration is. It's a statement that you're not going to ask for an environmental impact statement. It doesn't eliminate planning board standards in reviewing a subdivision. And that's a very important concept uh, that I talked about the first time I was in front of the board. I don't want to belabor it. You know, I gave you the history that, that each board has separate enabling statutes, that the, the village board actually delegates powers to each board under separate statutes. So, the, so this argument is a misleading argument. It's a misleading argument, and I believe it's a deliberately misleading argument. And I'm glad to hear uh, <coughs> Mr. Bennett uh, intone the necessity for this board to follow the law. Um, unfortunately, he comes to the same conclusion that he does <coughs> in every presentation, which is you can't do anything on this case. That's, that's his campaign. It's to convince you you have no power to do anything in this case. Well, in fact, you do. Um, there are enumerated standards uh, in your local uh, uh, subdivision uh, statutes that specifically, um, that specifically require you to um, create a desirable relationship to the general landform topographies, a desirable relationship to natural dra drainage patterns, a desirable relationship with ecological concerns in general, to preserve and protect natural resources. Um, those, those standards that you have to apply um, are relevant in looking at this new information that this board never had before, um, which I think is probably the most important impact uh, from an environmental standpoint, and that's the Captain's Neck driveway. That's a driveway that is ringed in on one side by steel sheeting so close to, the, the, to my client's property that 
to date, after 16 months of review of a final plat plan, we still don't know the distance that those ste that steel sheeting is from the actual lot line. We've never gotten that. We've repeatedly, this board asked them to do it. Your own engineer asked the applicant to get a, a an easement from the neighbor because the construction work was going to be so close to his property. They, they, the, your engineer said uh, very early on he's going to have to get a disturbance easement permission to disturb his land because it's so close. On the other side is a retaining wall, and you saw how it's it's not being built at natural grade because they're they have to fill as they go up this hill. Uh, in a, this, the significance of the captain's neck, the location of the driveway, is that it confirms what Alan McFarland has been saying for years to this board, that there's a huge drainage problem on this property. And until we got the driveway profile, which was only presented for the first time in this final plat approval section, we, nobody knew w what the situation was with drainage. Well, when the applicant came in 16 months ago, um, what they depicted was six, six, six dry wells uh, on the driveway. And that was only the beginning of the saga because the applicant, uh, rather than being cooperative and disclosing and fully and fairly providing you the, the facts of what's going on with drainage, frankly, played games with, with you. And we didn't, you know, first it was, oh, we have six dry wells. Then your, your engineer said, well, we want you to, and the board agreed, we want you to um, uh, create the capacity for a larger rainstorm, five-inch rainstorms because of global warming, climate change. And they said, okay, okay, we'll do that. So they did that. And they came out with a six dry well plan um, that used uh, three-inch rainfall and, um, and a, uh, I believe, a, a 2% two, two uh, runoff coefficient. Uh, and then what happened is uh, the board noticed it or we noticed it and said, wait a minute, they didn't give you the five inch rainfall. So then they, they rejiggered it to five inches and they, and, and they cut down the amount of runoff. Okay, so they were, they were playing games with the numbers so that the, that, so that the resulting capacity of the system looked the same. And they did this over a period of eight, nine months. And even as recently as March 1st, and meanwhile, Mr. Keffer came in and, and analyzed it. Uh, he, he also analyzed the direction of, of surface water runoff on the property, which is a very significant factor to consider here. And I, wanna, I hope I ha can address that with you. Um, Mr. Keffer came in and told you that it would require 18 dry, dry wells, 18 dry wells, if, if they had used the proper data. They then returned to you even as late as March 1st of 2023, and again, they, they increased the number of dry wells to, I believe this time they went up to uh, 10 dry wells, but they still used they still used an, the incorrect runoff amount. So they were still working to not show you how much water they would have to contain on this site. And it was only when Mr. Keffer, in the five minutes that he was accorded, stood up again and said, hey, you know, <laughs> my calculations were correct. They needed, you know, 18 dry wells. Finally, on March 23rd, they came in with a plan. March 23rd of this year is when you finally got information from them about what, what, the real, what the real drainage situation is on that driveway. And they finally came out with a plan that had 11 dry wells, they were bigger dry wells, and they were deeper dry wells. So the applicant, through counsel, has been playing a game of hide and seek with you. And he's been, do I would suggest that the way this information has come trickling in suggests that he's not being candid with you. And now today he stands, so, so yes, you know, Mr. Keffer uh, 
uh, came in, he's the, he's the director of civil engineering and the senior vice president at H2M, um, came in with a report on the latest plan that you got 16 months, 16 months later after he began this, this process, this final plat process. That's when you finally got accurate information on drainage. And Mr. Keffer came in and he said, yes, this drainage system will contain the runoff for a five-inch rainstorm with the, the, air, the zone of contribution and the correct amount of runoff. So now, Mr. Bennett is, is uh, campaigning and telling you, that's, that's the end of the game. That's it. That's all you can do. Well, let me just say this. Engineers are very capable people. And you can, you can frankly, you can engineer anything. Uh, he could probably engineer a small building on that site where, that, where, that, uh, where the Captain's Neck driveway is. You can engineer anything. But it doesn't mean because, because a system can contain this massive amount of water that it's a good idea or that it represents good planning. And when Mr. Bennett suggests to you, like, oh, oh, you know, I know that, you know, you may not like this project, you know, but sometimes you have to do things you don't like. I'm not suggesting to you, you know, that I'm not trying to encourage you into thinking that if you don't like this project, you can say no to it. What I'm encouraging you to do is to read carefully what your standards are what your legally applicable standards are in granting subdivision approvals. And they don't say that anything goes on drainage. You know, that it's, that it's, that's great, you know, that, that you can, that you need, I mean, just think about this for a minute. Step back and think about this. 18 dry wells are needed on this driveway to keep it functional. That's a heck of a lot of water coming down there. And when you combine it with the evidence that Mr. Keffer also brought in front of you, where he diagrammed the flow of surface water on this property, you can see it's running. The arrows are pointing all, they, they gently curve south and southwest, and they head to Captain's Neck. Why? Because they're going right into Heady Creek. So this is not, this isn't a game we're playing where you, you know, where we don't like it and we're, you know, we're grasping at straws. What we're trying to suggest to you is that you're in the position that you're in to exercise your planning judgment. Not, you're not, you don't have to accept and, you know, the fact that, it, that it's Kate, that this system is now after 16 months after playing hide and seek with you, you now know that at least it can capture that amount of, of rainwater. That's the starting point. That's not the end. That doesn't, that doesn't decide things for you. You then have to look at your standards. Do, does it make sense to carve out a driveway that creates a virtual sluiceway directed right toward Captain's Neck and Hetty Creek? And you know, Dr. Goldler came in here and you know he's not asking you to change standards. What what he's what what Goldbler is saying. Goldbler's testimony <laughs> complements Mr. Heffer's uh, Keffer's testimony. Excuse me, because Mr. Keffer is showing you where the drainage is going on site, and Dr. Goldbler is talking about what it can do. And what he's telling you is that it's a, that Hetty Creek is. Uh, impaired. It, it has a unique uh, quality that the waters reside there for a long time. They are not, there's not flushing. Freak, there's not frequent flushing, which means there's more opportunity for water to sit stagnant. And what he's telling you is that even with uh, innovative alternative septic systems, they're pumping out, uh, they're pumping out uh, nitrates at levels that are about 200%, 200% more than the, the existing nitrate levels in Hetty Creek. Now, he's not criticizing innovative alternative septic systems. He's just saying to you, it's a fact that if this water 
makes its way, when this water makes its way into Hetty Creek, it's going to be damaging to Hetty, Hetty Creek, which is already impaired. It's a critical environmental area. Your comprehensive plan designated the wetlands as critical wetlands to be protected. So what we're really saying about this driveway is, uh, you know, not that it's, uh, uh, not that it's inconvenient or, you know, what, what we're trying to say to you is what makes you a planning board member is that you do more than just look at an engineer and go, is that okay? Okay, we're going to do it. That's not what your job is. Your job is to exercise planning judgment and to say, is this in the interest of good planning? Does this create a desirable relationship with where surface water is running on this property? Does it, it, does it, is it constructed in a way that creates a desirable relationship with existing topography, with existing runoff? And the answer to all of those questions is no, it does not. And it should, and the, and the, and the bottom line here is not, can, can we construct a massive drainage system that'll, you know, gather this water together? First of all, that is not stopping this water from going to Eddy Creek. It's injecting it into the groundwater. That's what it's doing. In some ways, that's not such a great thing because it's, it's putting it into the groundwater, which has a two-year travel time to Eddy Creek. That may sound like a lot to you, two years, but it's not. That's the critical, that, is a, that means it's critically close to Hetty Creek. So this is not, this is not a case where we're asking you to, uh, you know, punish an applicant or we're encouraging you to, you know, to use your subjective judgment that you don't like it. Quite the contrary, quite the contrary. What I'm asking you is, is to, is to, now you, you have the evidence of what's going on with this driveway. What, what I'm asking you to do is look at the standards that you're required to apply. And it's not a simple question of, oh, the engineer decides it. If the engineer decided it, that's who would decide subdivision approvals. And that's not the way we do it. You, we have a separate planning board because it, it's supposed to have this kind of discretion. So I, I would... Uh, urge you to, you know, put the pieces of this puzzle together. And, and one of the pieces, you know, of the puzzle is, you know, what's, what is the, what's the need for this captain's neck driveway, given these water concerns, given the fact that harmful algae blooms are a, an enormous problem. The, the state government has just allocated literally millions of dollars to sites that include the village of Southampton because Harmful algae blooms are a serious health hazard and a serious threat to our drinking water quality. This is a serious issue. And frankly, you know, the buck stops here. It doesn't stop at the engineer's desk who says, yeah, that'll, that'll contain 18, you know, they now have 11 dry wells. But let's call it 11, 11 expanded dry wells or 18 dry wells on a driveway. That alone should suggest this is not the right place and it's not the right solution. And you don't engineer your way around an area that's, that's, that's within the pathway of drainage. In fact, another one of the standards of your pl of planning board subdivision review suggests that you use easements to improve water quality. And another standard requires you to consider water quality in what you're doing. And that's, that's our complaint here, as, as well as the disturbance you know, along the edge of Mr. Ruttenberg's property. But the primary concern here is water quality, and there's no need for this driveway to be where it is. It should be on Hill Street. They should have one straight driveway down the edge of the property on Hill Street. And they should, and you as a planning board could, if you have the vision and the will, you have the authority, you could say, you know what, we want, we want a, uh, a rain garden. I'm sure you've heard about these rain gardens that, that, that municipalities are, are doing. It's a, it's a natural, soft solution to enhance water quality. That's what you need in this pathway that otherwise is running right down Captain, to Captain Snack Road and right into Hetty Creek. You should stop the runoff there. You shouldn't be building a super highway for the runoff. 
And the other thing is, I have to mention, in, in uh, Dr. Goldler's latest memo, um, he was very critical about the description of, of the water use here that they're, they're talking about because they're, they've, out, they've said, oh, we've got 300 gallons per day that are come out, gonna come out of each of these houses. And Go Dr. Goldler was making a point about the septic systems. And septic systems are based on bedrooms, on the number of bedrooms. And their plan for the septic systems showed footprints with 10 bedroom houses. Okay, now they could say, oh, we just did that because it was an example. But have you ever heard of a three bedroom house, a new house being built <laughs> on Hill Street or near Captain's Neck? No. So again, Dr. Goldler wasn't cri criticizing the existing standards. He was saying, they're not delivering accurate information to you. And I, I'm gonna say that directly. You have not been given accurate information by counsel and the applicant in this case. And he's trying, I would suggest it shows that it is misleading. The information that he's given you is misleading. And what I'm asking you to do, what we're asking you to do is not just protect my neighbor or my client, but protect the groundwater and the drainage and the overflow that's going to harm Hetty Creek. You do, and you can do it. And if, if you don't do anything, you can't complain when Hetty Creek has a harmful algae bloom that kills a dog or exacerbates somebody's asthma or damages the water quality. So I thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public on this matter? No? Okay. Does do any of the board members have questions or <clears throat> lively discussion? Um, I, I guess I'm wondering. It just came to mind, why is there a retaining wall? There's a retaining wall on one side of this driveway, but it's not required on the other. I just was wondering if anyone can address I, why. I have to speak to that because, because, because of the height. Go ahead, Vince, speak to it. Go ahead. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Vincent A. Gordiello. I'm a principal with the Rayner Group. We have been retained by the applicant to perform the uh, engineering relating to this subdivision project. The re purpose of the retaining wall is because the grade on the northerly side of the driveway is higher than the grade on the southerly side. And in order to, you know, you don't build a driveway in, in traveling it with one up here and one down here. So it's a, a means of actually uh, providing the grade necessary to build the driveway. And if you go to the site, you'll see that the actual, it retains a portion of the driveway that's on the, uh, the captain's neck parcel in which the easement actually goes through. So that's why. While I'm here, though, I, I would want to make a statement with respect to some of the comments that Mr. Bragman had just made. Uh, as a design professional, and I think I had made testimony at the last hearing, was your code is not very specific to drainage design criteria. It doesn't say, hey, use a three-inch storm event, use a five-inch storm event, use an eight-inch storm event. And, I, and if you members recall that conversation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say use this runoff coefficient. It says, doesn't say this. So through this design of this common driveway with multiple submissions, with review by Nelson and Pope, we have gotten to a point where I believe the drainage design is acceptable. With respect to the comments that Mr. Bragman has made, and with all due respect, he's not an engineer. And that's why you have your own engineer, and that's why the applicant has their engineer. I come up with a design, I give it to you, and the purpose of the village engineer is to tell this board whether it's adequate or not. And I believe Mr. Resling has said that today. And I thank you for your time. Thanks. The only thing I want to add is it's an iterative process. The first drainage plans that we submitted were in Mr. Gordiello's opinion and he's the village engineer and where <laughs> north haven east hampton quad uh, town of shelter island town of riverhead okay they were sufficient i think that's quite a resume however both the <laughs> objectants and there's no shell game there's no i wasn't hiding anything i mean this ad hominem stuff is which mr bragman is so enamored of uh, is reminds me of when you're weak on the facts, yell at your adversary, bang on your adversary, that's all it is, it's just sound and fury. We had a, a, a plan, 
our engineer, who's eminently qualified, was satisfied with it. The objections engineer didn't like it. The, town, the village's engineer had some comments. So we didn't stand our ground. My direction to, to Vince Gordiello, after a discussion with my clients, give them both what they want. So we were satisfied, and the bar kept getting, ra getting raised higher and higher. And, and uh, I guess we finally met the bar. So that's all there is to that. This shibboleth of Hetty Creek, do you know there are three paved ro roadways, or at least two, about 12 homes between <laughs> the closest part of Hetty Creek and this driveway, which will thankfully recharge not wastewater, but rainwater in a proper fashion. That's what your code tells us to do. It's probably, what's the most extensive wetlands jurisdiction? 300 feet? This is probably at least, I was trying to do a quick calculation on the Google map in the aerial, at least 2,000 feet away. There's no, not going to be any, any, any appreciable impact whatsoever on Hetty Creek other than the fact that you can say, you go back to that, you know, the leaf falling you know, in the forest, is there some sort of, you know, obviously philosophically you can't prove that, but from a rule of reason point of view, there's no impact on Hetty Creek, which is why you gave it a negative declaration, which is why your engineer is happy with it, which is why the objectance engineer is happy with it, et cetera, et cetera. So I would just ask you, and you have more than enough here to make a decision. I feel confident, oh, and one, one other thing I wanted to say, let's assume Ms. Morgan is right and you don't even have to look at what your sketch plan approval is, which I think is wrong, but let's assume for the purposes of argument that she's correct about that. You do have to look at what the Zoning Board of Appeals approved. You do have to look at the fact that in a coordinated seeker acts uh, uh, review, you looked at this map and were happy with it. So I'll leave it at that, and I'll ask you to make your decision. Thank you. Just one more question. Oh, certainly. Because someone brought up that a non-disturbance zone or that you'd have to get involved in the neighbor's property. No. Is that something that thank is you. going I'm, to... I'm glad, because I, I... Thank you. Um, there are two ways to go about this, and it's done all the time in construction methodology, and uh, Mr. Piazza, who, who probably, I assume, will probably tell you, be able to tell you this. If you're, if you're close to a, a, a neighbor's property line, you can either ask the neighbor if you can come onto their property uh, and construct something in a certain way, or you can put a s temporary sheet piles in, which are, uh, in other words, they retain the, 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 the soil on site without having to trespass on the neighbor's property. And that's the way we've, we've done it. Is that correct? I just, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I, every time I read plans, I, I, I realize that <laughs> I should keep my day job. It was a comment that was made by the village engineer that uh, due to the proximity of the proposed leaching structures that would, there would be the potential for construction to encroach onto the adjacent property and suggested that something be proposed, for example, a temporary easement on that neighbor's property. We did not elect to do that. What we elected to do is use temporary shoring methods that was submitted. Those details are shown on the plan. And as, as far as I'm concerned, they've been accepted by the village engineer. And, and I just want to add that the law, as you know, Ms. Bernstein, the law doesn't require that you engage in a futile act. So obviously, I was not about to ask Mr. Ruttenberg for a temporary easement on his property since he's been opposed to the subdivision for the last 12 years. But uh, it seemed a better course uh, just to do it and use, utilize a, an, a, an, a, a, an approved construction me methodology of temporary shoring. Thank you. Lisa, do you have anything? No, everything's been covered so far. Can the hand raise? Where? <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Jeff Bragman from Mr. Ruttenberg. I just wanted to add very quickly that um, this location is in the watershed of Hetty Creek. And um, I understand uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Bennett's comment, uh, oh, you know, there are 12 houses and, you know, everything's built up. Uh, because I, you know, I had a discussion about that with Dr. Gober and I said, you know, this area is pretty built up and, you know, so, you know, is what's going on with the water? And his answer was quite simple. He said, the water doesn't know or care 
that you have buildings or curbs or paving up. It's going into Heady Creek. It's part of the watershed. And it's not pure, pristine rainwater going in. It's runoff. And, and runoff is a problem. And it's in one of your planning board standards in reviewing subdivisions is whether this is a good idea or a bad idea about runoff. So this isn't pristine rainwater. It's runoff. It carries uh, components that are detrimental to drinking water and to the health of, of the water bodies. And again, it's your decision as a planning board when you apply the standards that you have whether these decisions are good planning or not good planning. And that's solely within your judgment based on those standards. And we, I'm trying to suggest, we have suggest, suggested that when you follow those standards, this is a problematical construction of a driveway that doesn't have to happen and, can't, and, is, and is likely to cause problems. Thank you. I have a question, too, for Mr. Gordiello, but you can go oh, first. Yeah. I, th this is like, let's th throw everything we can at it. What can we think of? Drinking water? You really, you really got to be kidding me. This is uh, every Suffolk County well is far uh, up, up gradient of this, uh, of this, of this project. Every, the prevalent flow of groundwater is to the south, out to the ocean. Uh, every well is well up gradient of this, and everyone is serviced by public water. So this will have no impact on public water. And I tell you that as you a land use director. Water? On public drinking water? Yeah. Zero. 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 Public drinking water. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gordillo, I just have a quick question. Um, have you w worked with any permeable driveway situations that, in, in, in this instance, might, along with a good drainage plan, help us help mitigate water? I, I, I personally don't believe that the uh, drainage situation with this project, let me back up. We're proposing 11 dry wells right now, 10 foot diameter, 8 mm -hmm. foot deep in that common driveway. Right. Half of those structures will never see water, in my professional opinion. And, and for the purposes of why one would go with a permeable driveway, gravel, um, and I'm not objecting to that, uh, should that be a condition of a final approval that you want us to use a pervious driveway in that situation? I, I mean, um, it, it's, it's, it's really for the purposes of trying to reduce the amount of runoff. Our drainage design and the bulk of our tributary area is the individual three lots. When these three lots come in for, for approval and they're developed, all the roof runoff from these, ha from these roofs are going into dry wells on those lots. So that tributary area that we're accounting for now in our drainage calculations for this driveway are going to be taken out of the mix when you develop these lots. So that no, goes... I understand that. I'm just thinking that it is a long driveway in that... Well, I, I think it's, if, what, 230 feet or something? Right. But if there was a... If it was somewhat permeable, it would, it would take, even in a, a, a smaller rainfall... It would take some of the. Uh, I, low I, 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 you know, I mean, I would have no problem with uh, working with the village engineer and meeting a, a permeable driveway that would work. For, you know, that would be acceptable to him. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, on that subject, you know, a lot of people will talk about putting down a, a an RCA base or a stone blend base stone blend. and spr sprinkle uh, gravel on top of it. You know, the the reality of that is though. Once you start putting heavy traffic on it, it's, it's, sol it's solid as a rock. Mm -hmm. So as far as a permeable driveway that's gravel, we would be looking at various size gradations of gravel, you know, some in different lifts, and, we, you know, using the voids, you're sure. You could definitely handle some of the volume of runoff through that. And I think we would be amenable to that if that should be a condition of final subdivision approval. Versus asphalt or oil and stone. Well, I, I believe, yeah. Okay. But again, are we, are we going to change the runoff coefficient then for the drainage? I don't know. I uh, mean, I don't know if there is there a way to calculate what that permeable driveway could be. Well, typically, what one with a gravel driveway, you would get credit for the voids in the gravel. 
mm-hmm. and 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 that would be st- somewhat storage for that. Well, I, again, I don't we'll want to get the permeable driveway, but leave the the drainage as engineered. You know. I, that, okay. I just wanted to bring that if, up. If, that, if that's if that's helpful, well, okay. we can make that a condition. I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Okay. All right. Um, I'm sorry. Again, this is Linda Margolin representing several of the neighbors. Um, of course, I don't know what this board is going to do. Um, but I will say that given the history on this project, I think there's a good chance that whoever feels aggrieved is likely to go to the courts and ask the court to review this board's decision. And I just want to say that I think it will be helpful to both sides, regardless of what you do, if you make a point of explaining what your determination is about the issue that we've raised, that this, since this driveway is not at natural grade, it's supposed to observe the side yard setback on the property. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm just wondering if Mark or Alan want to weigh in on anything? No questions here. Thank you. Okay. And hold on. Yeah, uh, uh, Tony, I don't know how to get in. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. I'm sorry to be on remote. I mean, the schedule moved, and it's nice to listen at, at great length to all the arguments. There's there's very little that our process has not reviewed, in my case, for many, many years. I have gone with great effort to the estate of, of Charlie Styler, who took all the videos for years, and and asked you, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. And and, and asked him to give me the, the running from the late nice uh, lady, uh, uh, Carol Zahosky, who, who did all the proceedings before the architectural review board in order for the the uh, opponent here, the a- applicant, to build his house. And there was considerable testimony uh, from her, uh, objected to very, um, I, have to, I hate the word very. Editorially, it's like having adverbs all over the speeches that my friend John Bennett always gives me. When he says L-Y, you know he's arguing. But not even, it was a long argument before the ARB to approve locating their house as far to the north as they could with the argument made by her many times that to the south by this, where this road is going to be built, and I'll use the word road in exclamation points, that, they, that it was a real drop. The reason they had to do it was such a huge drop on their property. It was a real problem with the neighbors, so they were doing everyone a favor by moving it north. Uh, for driveways, it was all sorts of arguments. I won't bore you with them. I have gotten the videos again, which I got five or six years ago, and I got the videos under uh, the uh, disclosure laws, uh, uh, under uh, fair whatever it is, and gave them to the fellows on the then with me on the planning board, and I forget who took them, and they disappeared. So I got them again, and I, the arguments that I recollect are the same. This is a serious drop, and when it was approved, three to two by the voter of this board, the two objected continuously that in approving the environmental thing, the big issue was access to this two acre lot from Catherine's Neck. There are, I believe, from my own recollection with the building department, three, I'll call them roads, off of Hill Street to the south that go into interior lots. I don't believe any of them have been developed. And and John Bennett did all sorts of research to tell me I'm nuts about easements and everything else. He gave me all the history of Fairley and of the stuff down by his clients for uh, Mr. Uh, Fox and all those people. Those are not driveways or flag lots. Those are real roads. They're easements like there is on Captain's on the 
artist colony lane. They're 35, 34 to 35 feet wide. They're very wide. They're taken care of by all the neighbors and they, the issues are all settled by long legal agreements as to who does what, and they're horizontal. <coughs> they don't regard all this drainage. What concerned us at the time and does now and it is a, probably about to be enacted formally when the trustees get to us is, if you don't have flag lots, there is a dispute that someday comes back to the people who run the village about who's subjecting to what that goes on with a flagpole lot. And that is something that needs to be avoided as a matter of good policy for any land development. And that remains my objection. I think it's unwise for us to approve it. And I happen to believe with all the work I've done on the state law and on the proceedings and everything else, that this board still has, and I'm gonna use the word substantial jurisdiction over this development which was not preempted by magic, by the torches litigation that took place by predecessors to Mr. Bennett, a lawyer and predecessors, and by judgment by a board on which the applicant sat for many years. He was a distinguished civil servant for the village. And so this setting this precedent with him in his position and everything else for the rest of the village is one of high, um, I'm gonna call it, um, a high level, it's, I realize, realize it's unfair to, to be bad with someone who's applying. Probably me, if I ever want a variance, I'm gonna not get it, because I agreed reluctantly to serve in this matter for a number of years, so I come with unclean hands. But I think it's bad policy for the development of the village. We've got a number of things we're gonna face in the next, it looks like our agenda in the next part of this meeting in the next year or two. Um, so I, I, I want to stick with a longer view. I think anything that deviates from the necessity of a flag lot where the owner controls it all is a mistake for the long-term planning and filling in the remaining spaces in the village. So that's it. If you heard me, fine. If not, I'll give the speech again next month. We heard you, Alan. Thank you. Okay. I didn't know. If did you want to? Did you want us to discuss um, what we had reviewed? Yes. Um, John Ellsworth put together a memo just to kind of clarify uh, the conditions of the sketch plan approval and you know where we're at. Um, John, are you able to go through those? He's on Zoom. There he is. Thanks, John. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, we just went back and looked at the um, sketch plan decision from July of 2018. And there were uh, five conditions established in that approval. Um, we looked at all five of them to see if they've been met. And um, in our opinion, they have been met. Uh, and again, we're just. Uh, Talking about the conditions from the sketch plan approval, obviously uh, the board's decision is going to be based on a much wider uh, set of uh, facts and information. Uh, the first condition was that there be a landscaping plan, uh, and there was uh, submitted a landscaping plan. Uh, uh, there was a planting plan and planting details um, uh, prepared by the applicant's architect. Uh, they were revised in October of 2022. Uh, there were two sheets, the plan itself and the details. Uh, however, uh, we note that uh, there were subsequent uh, revisions to the uh, subdivision plan based on uh, modifications that were necessary for the driveway connection to lot three to Captain's Neck Lane. Uh, so our recommendation is that those two drawings uh, be updated uh, to reflect the current plan uh, with regard to where the, uh, uh, the plantings are gonna go because uh, uh, it will be necessar necessary to remove a row of existing trees on the property uh, at Captain's Neck Lane and to replant them. The second condition uh, was to uh, 
uh, provide a typical lot layout, which illustrates that they can accommodate the site improvements, uh, access, drainage structures, and the um, innovative uh, and alternative uh, sanitary system. Uh, the submitted documents include uh, such information, uh, and I'll uh, defer to Scott Reisinger to provide more details on that. Um, the third uh, condition was the roadway was roadway design details uh, and full roadway profile design for the proposed driveway uh, from Captain's Neck Lane, uh, and details regarding the drainage grading and and or retaining wall. Um, and again, the, um, the in the back and forth with the applicant, we did obtain the information that was specified under this third condition. And uh, again, I will uh, defer to Scott um, to provide uh, a more detailed discussion of what was provided. Uh, in addition, if he needs to, uh, based on what he had uh, testified to previously, uh, the fourth of the five items is the provision of a stormwater pollution prevention plan. And uh, we did receive a uh, what's known as a SWIP. Um, and by a memo dated October 21, uh, 2022, we issued comments on the submitted SWIP, uh, and, uh, uh, which was prepared by Rayner. Uh, that SWIP was dated uh, February of uh, 2019. Um, our recommendation is uh, that, uh, in accordance with how scripts are usually handled, uh, that our comments be, uh, if the subdivision is approved, uh, that these comments uh, in our memo on the script be addressed before the issuance of building permits. Uh, and that, again, that's typically how things are handled for SWIPs. Uh, the SWIP approval comes in conjunction with the review and issuance of the building permit. And then the fifth and final um, condition of the sketch plan approval was confirmation from the uh, uh, architectural review board and if appropriate, the uh, New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation regarding the historic significance of the house at 550 Hill Street. And if not contributing, that the structure may be demolished. Uh, the Village Board uh, of Architectural Review and Historic Preservation did issue a, a certificate of appropriateness for the um, house at 550 uh, Hill Street uh, for, demol for the demolition of that structure. Um, in the decision the filed on uh, December 2nd, 2021. Uh, and I would also note that although it wasn't specifically identified among the conditions in the sketch plan approval, uh, the uh, board, the uh, architectural review board, also issued a, a certificate of appropriateness for the other house uh, at 554, um, and that decision was filed on uh, September 13, 2021. Uh, so those are the five conditions, and based on uh, our analysis, and we'll be issuing a uh, submitting a memo a memo on that um, the that these five conditions have been met. Thank you. So uh, I, I don't know if we still have Scott to uh, see if he believes anything needs to be added with regard to the two conditions that pertain to engineering issues. Um, so Scott did have to leave, uh, but he will provide a memo as well. Okay. Okay. And I would just mention, I, with respect to those memos, those will obviously be made available to counsel for both groups to to have a chance to, to review. All right, so no more questions? All right. Um, so we're at the point of <laughs> deciding whether or not to close this public hearing. And um, I'd like to keep it open until our um, May 15th meeting um, I realize you're probably a little disappointed by that but I, I, I really want to have all five of us in a room together and there are some issues that we need to sort of hammer out with um, our council so if you would oblige us I'd like to keep it open until the May 15th meeting and um, 
if there are any more submissions that are going to come in, I would like to have a deadline of May 1st for that. Any written comment or... <laughs> no, I, I, just, I would just want to add that, I, 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 for the record, I will object, but it's been stated in such a gentlemanly way. <laughs> so Thank I'm you. Gonna, so yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a complicated application for this board, and there are, there's so much history, and there are new board members. I really want to be sure that we're all signed and sealed on this before I close it, and then I think it'll go very smoothly after that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have to do a motion for that, correct? Um, so if that's yeah. the chairman's motion, is there a second to the motion, that being that the matter will be held over to the May 15th meeting, um, be held open, and any further written submissions would, uh, we'd ask to be due by May 1. Was that the full motion? Correct. Is there a second? Yes. yes. Okay. And All uh, in favor? Aye. 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 We have two members on Zoom. And Mr. London, Mr. McFarland. We lost both of them. Oh. Okay. Okay. But there was a majority of three that voted. Right, there's a, there's yeah. a uh, Mr. McFarland is back. He's back in the attendee. Do you want to bring him back in? Okay. I don't know what happened with Mark. All right. Great. So great. there were enough of us to vote on. Yeah. Thank you, John. Have a good night. I'll see you in a week. So, yes, have fun. <laughs> Thank you. And with that, Mr. Chairman, may I be excused? For yes. You? Thank you. I'll go Long get journey home. Okay. But, yeah. I've been trying to, he's not coming in. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, you ready? Alice? Maybe. So, yeah, sure. Do we need to change your name, please? Oh, yes. No, I'll be Jeff. I'll be Jeff. I'm ready. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. Okay. Okay, we're going to work uh, move into our work session part of the meeting and um, the first application on the agenda is Hetty Creek LLC lot line modification and the applicant has requested an adjournment to May 1st and I'm pretty sure we voted on that already I'm we yep. approved that okay um, so the next application uh, this is gonna be the first time we're looking at this together with the applicant it's for RRFA CF LLC 550 Wickapod Road um, Excuse me, Chair. I have that the motion was only till April seventeenth on Hetty Creek, not to May first. That that is new. It is new. Yeah, it went to April seventeenth at the last meeting. Hold on, I have the meeting. I have it. Yep, you're right. Okay, so we do have to vote on that quickly. Okay, I would like to um, propose that we accept the applicants, the applicant for Hetty Creek LLC lot line modification, for an adjournment to May first. Can I get a second? 
I'm voting for it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. It's official. So let's move on to 550 Wicca Pond Lane. Yep. So can I just clarify, is it 550 or 560? I just want to. I thought it was 560. I'm hoping the applicant's council knows. Okay, I just want to get that clarified right off the bat. And if that's a mistake on the agenda, I'm sorry about that. I think it, it may be in both ways on the It may be both. Oh, it, it may be both. Yeah, very, very good. Well, maybe. It's a big piece of land. <laughs> Two lots. Two lots to Eddie Creek of all places. Okay. No, we're on the next one, Alan. Alan Phillips Pond. One behind, Alan. Now we're going down the front road. So, what way is it being created? Is it from the correction on the address? Is it 560? I'm sorry if I missed that. I, I, think, I think it may think be both. both in it. It's both, okay. Yeah. We'll go with what's on the uh, agenda. I'm sorry? Do you have an updated agenda? Updated? Yeah. Do you have this agenda? Did you want to ask Kathy to take us through some of the points or maybe sure. Alex? Um, okay, so we put together a initial review of this subdivision application and this is a sketch plan application. Uh, they have, the applicant has submitted two plans. One is a 12 lot full yield map um, and I'll clarify right now is that these are not engineered plans and there's a reason for that. This is the sketch plan phase. And uh, this gives an opportunity to, to, for the planning board to give some input on the, how is it, form, layout, and design? Form, layout, and purpose. And purpose. And so, although it's not engineered and not, there's not dimensions on the plans and we can't verify it, um, it, it appears to meet the requirements as far as lot width, lot uh, size, to, to show that the property yield would be 12 lots. So that's the one on the, uh, on the table on the left and also on the screen, good. And um, the second version of the map that's provided is a reduced density, which shows 10 lots um, with, um, that are accessed by flag lots with common driveways and easements. Um, the lots are in some cases a little awkward they're back to back it's there's um, no public open space um, and it pretty much maxes out the property so our comment comments in our memo were directed towards the precedence that has occurred in recent years for clustering of subdivisions and providing for meaningful open space or recreation or uh, Preservation. Public preservation in general. <laughs> and so we um, provided some thoughts in the memo of just to get the conversation thought started about, you know, from the planning board on, you know, what are the priorities, what should be the priorities here um, if, if it's going to be recommended that the applicant uh, pursue a clustered subdivision. So we also would look at items such as where should the access be and in some cases we might, might not have the the information that we'd need um, and you know access very much could depend on what a traffic engineer would uh, recommend as far as you know how many cars are coming around that corner on Wickapog Road and how many cars go down Feller Street uh, there's also the there's wetlands on the property uh, a fringe fringe wetlands and uh, there is, when I say fringe, it really kind of, it's, it just goes along the shoreline. There's not significant areas of, uh, of regulated freshwater wetlands, uh, but there are wetlands there and there's definitely a need for buffering. Um, and there's also a flood zone there. 
I believe we included a, a little map of the, the flood zone in the, in the memo. <coughs> so you can see that um, a portion of the site is definitely within a, a flood zone and um, an area of, it's called the Limwa zone boundary, but basically what that means is that there's moderate wave action possibly. And uh, so instead, when you're in one of those zones, you actually have to comply with the V zone requirements rather than the A zone requirements on the, um, f on the FEMA maps. And that has to do with uh, the, the lowest hor horizontal structural member of a building. So there's, you actually have to um, comply with a, a more strict uh, FEMA requirement. All right, so the memo that I put together, we, um, one of the other things um, is that there is, you know, eventually we're going we're gonna to be doing, it would be a lot of work before this comes to any kind of approval or any kind of a decision, but um, as far as the sketch plan phase goes, you know, this is the time to give the guidance. So um, anything else, that, Alice, that you think I should hit on at this point? Um. There were just there were a couple of things that we wanted from the applicant, and I, I'm not sure, John, if, if this is accurate or not. I, I didn't see um, declarations of covenants and restrictions referenced in the prior decision, but on it the said report on the prior. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I saw that request. Yeah, it was mentioned on the map, yeah. uh, but we didn't see that there was any. So if you uh, could just get it, that. It, believe it or not, uh, it was okay. not unusual for the planning board not to require. Uh, CNRs, but there may be some on there. W w whatever it is, okay. it is what it is. I report it. All right, so it's just a standard map notation. Yep. That's fine. Um, and I think that that might be it from me for now. Yeah. I just had a couple comments, if I may, but I don't want to. No, that's what we're here for. This is okay. a work session. I we have just, questions too. Um, so the 12 lot is for yield purposes only. Yeah, we're proposing a 10-lot subdivision. So uh, this is the subject property is 30 acres of 12-lot yield. It's in an R80 zoning district. Some of those other, I, I think, I know the subdivision's fairly well, some of those other cluster plants, which are only at 20%, uh, were in a three-acre zone. Uh, this proposed 10-lot subdivision is essentially up zoning the property to three acre zoning. There's three acre zoning here, there's two acre zoning here. And when I say acre, it's a builder's acre, 120,000 square feet, 20,000 square feet. So we're essentially, with this 10 lot yield, we're do, uh, up zoning the property to three acre zoning. It's 1,250,000 and 129 square feet of lot area um, divided by 120,000 square feet, it's 10.3 lots. So we're really up zoning to three acre. All proposed lots are sufficient in lot area. No variance is required for lot area width. Uh, the location of wetlands have to be shown on a proposed map under your subdivision regulations, but they are not excluded from calculation. And they're relatively minor in terms of size in any event, but they're not excluded. Your, your code doesn't exclude uh, wetlands from calculation, so uh, it goes into the yield, but it's not adding that much to the yield. Um, the recently adopted master plan, interesting, discourages lots that are less than the minimum size per permitted in zoning. So you got a little bit of a, a tension going on here. You're talking about cluster, but your, your um, master plan discourages lots that are less than the minimum size permitted in zoning. So again, we're essentially rezoning this property. Um, and just a, a bit about the flag lots. I don't know what it is. It seems to be people have this bugaboo with flag lots, but they function all over. I know they yeah. function, but I can yeah. say that in, in my professional career, uh -huh. I've gotten into so many tangles with easements. You know why? <laughs> because so many of those lots were created crazy. The planning boards out here would create flag lots, and they would say, you have to have a common driveway there. And they'd leave it like that. Yeah. They'd it would be nice like if it was ownership. The next thing you know, you have people, well, no, 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 but it's, it's ta the next thing you know, how people have arguing over who's going to pave it, who's going to and everything, yeah. and that all, who, all of it is solved. Who has the right to cross it? Yeah, well, no, but that's all solved with common driveway agreements. But I just want to tell you, your code does allow flag lots. I know. And it says, and um, Kathy kindly put in the memo, um, take a look at um, section uh, 
9738G, the, por the pole portion of each flag lash will be 25 feet in width. Um, where are they? Uh, no, they are. They're 25 feet in width. Side by side flag poles are proposed to are should be utilized common driveways, which they are common driveway cases. No more than three flag poles lots are proposed to use the same common driveway. This one uses three. This one common driveway has is for three. This one is for two. Um, can't be more than 500 feet in length. Not not 500 feet. In length. It's I just just clarify that the, the not more than 500 feet is the driveway, not the not the yes, yes, yes okay. Yes. You were, um, I think I it, it's you were not, gonna. It's not, it's not it's not dimensioned, um, but I did put a scale against it. Um, so, but I, we'll, we'll put that on it. On it. And no common driveway is located closer than 75 feet from the intersection, which is not. And then it says all utilities we installed underground and will provide adequate screening, which we will do. So the only other thing that I had was a comment about uh, two things, a, a dedication of a park. I have to tell you that in the last 30 years, I can't think of a single instance where this board did not accept a park fee in lieu of a park. I mean, you can require a park, but you can't require that it be dedicated to the public. You can require a park. But mm -hmm. it, if you want to park on the subdivision, it can only be used by the, the lot owners in the park. So typically, people say, "Well, put it into the park. Put it into the into the. Give us a park fee." And interestingly, there's a, an opinion of the attorney general that says you can actually use a park fee coming from a subdivision to upgrade and maintain existing parks. So that's why the municipalities tend to do that. And the other only other thing is that um, you can't require public access, physical access to fill. Phillips Pond. That would be a, that would quite literally be a take. Uh, but other than that, those are the only comments. And I just looked at the memo very quickly, and this is all new. I'm sure you have a lot of things to say and think about. So that's really all I have to say right now. Rick? Nope. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, this might be inappropriate, but I tend to be every now and again. Is there any consideration for possible preservation? Well, I'm going to be quite bold about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was bold, so you can be bold. Okay, good. We purposely Just set this up. Just because, you know. We purposely set this up, and we would love to engage in a dialogue like this. The village of Southampton generates between 3.5, 35% and 40% of the CPF money. 35 to 40%. And Every other year, I go to the mayor and say, yeah. why, why are you not in the supervisor's office saying, at least give us half of that of 35 to 40%, or give us a third of that 35 to 40%. So we've set this up with the possibility. We would be more than happy to discuss. We've reduced the yield. Uh, we've essentially upzoned the property. Uh, we've set it up so some of these lots could be purchased with CPF money. Um, and that's 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 what we thought of with that. We'd be more than willing to engage uh, in, in, a, in that conversation. Great. That's very generous. Thank you. Excuse me. That's very generous. Well, you never get exactly fair market value with those guys, but you know we were more than happy to work on that. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, the Fowler family has been here forever. Yep. Almost as long as the Bennett family. No, I'm just kidding. And and Rick's grandfather uh, gave that wonderful uh, walkway on 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 uh, Wicker Park. You know that park we walked down to. That was a six or seven acre gift. Just I was in such part. So they've been good stewards of the property. They've been good citizens. So. And the road. Yes. The road the beach. And the road. Yes. As well. So. That's all. Thanks okay. for listening. Wonderful. Just, just for the record, Rick, Rick Fowler, that's you? Okay. Sorry. <coughs> the, the mic is right by your hand. Oh, there it is. I was thinking, sorry about that. I mean, just from my perspective, when you say that it's been designed in such a way that the um, CPF could possibly be used to purchase certain properties, um, I would, 
I would like to think about how that could be done in a coordinated fashion so you don't get one here and one there. And that was that just came into my head. You know, like one. that if the CPF purchased one over here and then one over here, oh, you, you know, you would want to have something yeah. together. So yeah. it, I think pursuing it in such a way that, you know, we, you kind of think about what's the most important parts of the property. And that's what that's where we were going with the with the report is what where are the priority areas on the site? Um, are we, are we uh, should we be looking more at, you know, the visual impacts um, as you're coming down Wickelpog Road, you know, do we want to see the Fowler Farm, the prior fire Fowler Farm that was on the other side that's in the town of Southampton possibly in, in that view shed, um, you know, again, and then do we want to, is it more important to preserve wetlands and access to the pond or agricultural? So these are all things that you know, we don't have guidance from the comprehensive plan necessarily on what is or more important. Or in the code. Or in the, the code, the municipalities exactly. do. Right. Well, I think there's, there's guidance on certain things, like we, you know, have a master plan that's not um, into flag lot poles anymore, and we've had a lot of discussion about that, so that's one thing that I feel like we should think about being consistent and looking at a master plan. Um, and the other thing is the this is in a very scenic area, so I think that the board's guidance about the village code and keeping things scenic and the you know farmland views that any development that goes on here, any place should do as much as possible to preserve those views and you know as much green as possible. And I personally feel that a park is much better than a park fee even if only the people who are there are using the park. And if you look around, the developments that have open area are just much more appealing and much more scenic and things that you know other people can enjoy, even if you're just looking at it. Or if you bike down there, if it's not a private road or, or whatever it is. Um, I, you know, I, I personally feel that any subdivision should look to maximize that. And I you know, think that the you know, as long as it's the required density, those 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 things and preserving the feel of this place is like super important. But this this is a very um, scenic, central, beautiful area. So I, I you know, I, and I don't know what the options are in terms of there's a body of water. If you could speak to that, Kathy, a little bit about what the body, what the options are to either can we preserve a view of that body of water, or if you have a road, you know, if you have a cluster development, which I think is a much better way to go, you know, rather than using the flag lots. Can you preserve, can, you know, preserve a view of the water because that's very limited around? Uh, I was trying to see the water from Wickapog and from Fowler and I couldn't see the water. And, um, and you know, it's open farm field. Uh, so I don't know that that would really help. Um, but there, you know, there is a, there is an easement um, on the property you know, that goes straight down Wickapog. There's an easement there. And, you know, that could be an opportunity possibly. I, maybe you can explain that easement, John, uh, Mr. Bennett, uh, what that, oh no, that easement, Never mind. I'm sorry. That easement is for the property to the west and yep. their pool and garage or something like that. Okay. So that's There's not, like a tennis yeah. court or something, I think. Yeah. If I can answer, oh, that was to Do take you, um, care of a, that was to yeah. take care of a, of, of no. that, as opposed to no. having an adverse Thanks. possession fight. I, <laughs> I, I, I forgot that that was what that easement was for. And but just to answer your question a, a little bit, there's some um, there's guidance on subdivision design from New York State, which we've made available to the board members. And there's some um, interesting examples there that talk about cluster subdivisions and conservation subdivisions. Um, and one of the examples that they use is arranging a cluster subdivision in a way that maximizes the views to important resources. And they talk about um, scenic views. Um, so potentially, in a non-conventional subdivision, you could arrange the lots in such a way that there would be more beneficial or public views to water bodies and things like that if the, if the board determines that's uh, a priority mm -hmm. in, the, in the design. But does that speak to the public aspect of that? Is that public coming onto this property that is basically private? No. It, it would depend on, on how it's designed. I mean, it could be configured in a way. Uh, the example that they give is one in a subdivision where all of the lots enjoy views of a waterfront, whereas in a conventional subdivision, only lots that that touch the water would benefit. If there's additional streets being introduced, like in the yield plan, 
it could be if that's a public road, it could be arranged that the public, you know, benefits in, in some way as well. It all depends on how it's arranged. Um, and that's why there's, there's different guidance about how you do a cluster or conservation uh, subdivision. I don't think that answered the question. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Cowell was asking about public access, I thought. That was part of it. No, okay. he, he actually yeah, okay. did answer it. But just so you know, uh, you, you can't require public access. You can't require dedication of the roads. You can't require easements. You can't uh, You can't keep, a, keep people out, though, right? I mean, Excuse people me? people bike through subdivisions, and like it's not generally I, I may be old school. that they when put I a chain up. I see a sign up. that says private road. I don't go down it. Well, is there going to be a sign that says private road? Well, I, I'm, we're not going to create some situation where there can be public access to Phillips Pond. We're so, not going to do that. So what's, I think what we're, we're talking about a couple of different things. Here. No, I know so, you are, no, but so I, I'm just making sure that there's right. been some suggestion that you could, by subdivision design, allow for access, <laughs> private, public access to yeah, Phillips Pond. Yeah, a driveway, for instance, or something. No, you can't do that. Right. I, Everybody I, knows okay. that. Yeah. But but we're talking. But if we're talking about, you talking about, about vistas and stuff like that, I, I get yeah. that. Yeah. No, that's right. That, we're talk talking about um, preserving an important part of this of this property through through purchase or however. Mm -hmm. One of the considerations could be that it's a public recreational use that there is you know access for you views. Or oh, I'm sorry. No, um, we, I, the, we, the, we would only consider uh, totally, uh, uh, and that's a, a, a longer discussion. But we would only consider. The type of um, t what, what's the word for it? I've passive. Done quite a few, excuse me. Passive. Pa yeah, I've done quite a few deals with okay. the town on it. Purely passive. So essentially, it's just there for preservation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. 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 So that's allowed within if CPF were to uh, have funds go toward this. That there is no public access at that point once CPF is involved. Well, no. I mean, it, the property owner would be a party to a transaction with the town. So they would set the parameters. Uh, Tony, um, <clears throat> the, the CPF, which is the great uh, bank in the sky that never goes under, <laughs> is used for everything. They, we, it was going to redevelop Job's Lane at one point. That's a wonderful idea that John invented to put before you, or not invented, he put before you quite nicely. I'm totally intrigued with what the proponent wants to do. It's a responsible family and for generations, a responsible lady, and I'd like to, at some point, through council, he may be even in person, get before us their ambitions for what happens to the development of one of the few remaining unused spaces in the village. For the next couple of years, with my old age, it won't be me, it will be all you guys. We're dealing with what happens to what's left. And it would be great to get her view. She's a wonderful lady, good son. This is, this is a great deal. Phillips Pond is a great spot. We're not going to go duck shooting there <clears throat> with a bunch of houses. This is going to fill in like the uh, thing that's outside the village up at the Roscoe development there by the north of the village by uh, Duck on Lane. This is a this is a filling, and you can do some imaginative stuff if people give it free reign with what's there. The public doesn't have to come and cheer and play tennis and 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 and, and, and do this stuff. But this is a good moment to get it launched, and so I'm in favor of of Bench doing it. This is really good. John Bennett will be at his most eloquent. I can't wait to see him in full speed. This is great. We did two we, we this board approved two developments there recently, John. You did you got two developments, didn't you, on the to, to the west a little recently? Which dealt with Phillips Pond and how far down you go and exit. We've dealt with these issues. Phillips Pond is just like uh, Cooper's Pond or Halsey Neck Pond or Egg Lake Agawam and all those things. It's one of the residual little ponds left from the glaciers. So let's do something properly. Uh, and I, as Kathy said, Kathy laid out all the larger stuff. What are the views? Do we have agriculture? Do we have farmers? What should we do with what's left of the village? So that's what's in front of us in my view. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, 
No, I thank you for that, Alan. Understand. My computer doesn't work, but I think that's what it is. And if, if John can organize it right, we'll at least get the issues in front of us to deal with what are the choices. Thank you, John. Yeah, no, I, th th this is a, a long standing village family. You know, like myself, they're all village natives, and there's no desire to have anything other than a temp to very temporary song and to have a, a cooperative and a, a, a conversations with the village, maybe the town, maybe some acquisition. Uh, and, and we welcome any thoughts that you have on it. And, and, and help, as a matter of fact, too. I don't, again, I don't know why the town, we generate, this village generates 35 to 40 percent of the CPF money, but we get a small fraction of that. So Maybe we talk to the guys on the Ag Advisory Committee and get their input because it is an agricultural well, I, I do think that this board should consider what the priorities are for this site because we do have some competing interests here potentially. You know, there, there is wetlands, there are beautiful view sheds, uh, there's prime ag soils, so you might want to consider if there's a future for farming here, if that's acceptable. And there are, you know, there's significant FEMA flood zones in one portion of the lot and, the, and not the entire portion of the lot. So I, I do think we need to consider the balance of those considerations. And then I, I also think that um, the village would be happy to speak to the CPF Advisory Committee about what can be done here. Okay. Great. So it's a good start. Yeah. yeah. It's a launch. You didn't, you, you didn't think we were going to walk out of here without an approval sign. <laughs> 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 it took long enough to get it on the agenda, yeah. so let's you know. move forward. Thank you. All right, thank you. So um, the question is at this point, though, do we leave it on the agenda or do we uh, take it off until we've had a little bit of time to think, uh, until, I don't know if, if the applicant is going to well, propose I'll anything. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we need a little more time with this memo and for the board to talk about some of the priorities. So I think it, in, in this instance, it makes sense to, to keep it on the agenda for now. We're not, we're not asking for any revisions at the moment, so I do think we should do that. And Alice, you had asked for Declaration of Covenants, so that was the yep. one thing? John will get it to me. Okay. Th this is a large, this is lot number three, I think, on a prior subdivision, which is the way that they would do it. They would just cab off a couple of lots. And so I, you would think there would be some senior lots and stuff like that? But whatever they are, I'll get them to you. Okay. And then it was something about it multiple times, as you said. No. This is a lot number three on a three lot subdivision, I believe. One, oh, and then, you know, one of the lots, yeah, uh, the, I represented the uh, lift and agree, and they further subdivided another lot. You're right. No, that's right. I'm sorry. That's right. That's it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, We'll just keep it on as a, a work session thing as we work our way through this. We do it every two weeks. Well, not really. No. <laughs> the first and third Mondays generally. So that's not every two always weeks. every two weeks. Sometimes oh. it is. Yeah. It depends on how many Mondays there are. <laughs> that's true. Sometimes there's five. The, the screening, Kathy, on the trees. I read something that you wrote about the so, trees on one road, and that yeah, I wanted to understand what that was about. It really, it really was. As I was driving down there, I was looking at the the huge hedge that's on the north side of Fowler Street before you come to the 90 degree degree turn, and I wanted to kind of think about like if that the property on the corner had. A, a hedge like that, you know, you're coming into that corner and it's a blind turn to begin with. And so it was just, you know, just something to think about from the visual perspective. Mm -hmm. that, that was really all. Okay, Would the little cottage on the corner be gone? I don't know. I love that house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. You live there? I do. Oh, okay. Great spot. Yeah. <laughs> all right, to be continued. Thank you. So, a month? Is that what I hear? Do you want to, do, um, do, do you think a month is good? 
or I'm just I'm just do out. instead of uh, May 1st, I don't know if we can continue the conversation in two weeks, so it would be the following yeah, meeting. Maybe less than two weeks. Is the, is the next meeting on the 1st or the 15th? Oh, right. That's a, less than two weeks away. Okay. So maybe maybe adjourn it to the 15th? Sure. Do we have to vote on that? Yes. Okay. Yes, so I'd like to move that we um, adjourn this application to our May 15th meeting for further discussion. Can I get a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So you do it in, in May 15th. Um, okay. I think I have the next one. You do. Yep. And I was wondering, because we really can't do much until the ZBA looks at it. Uh, number yeah. One. And number two. You're hungry? No, I, I have to drive to eat in Pennsylvania tonight because <laughs> there's a accepted students day at Lafayette for my youngest son. So I that's probably maybe if I could get there before twelve <laughs> at night. So you want to adjourn? Yeah, that's okay with you. I mean I don't think I'm foreclosing any discussion on it. I've got to no. wait until the ZBA. To the first? Route seventy eight it'll work, you'll get there. Excuse me? Route seventy eight thank you it'll work you'll get there. Route seventy eight? It's yeah, it's whatever request you want to make. Yeah. Uh, May fifth or May first or May fifteenth. It's May up 15th. to you. May fifteenth. Okay, okay. So I'd like to move that we adjourn the discussion for Woodhill LLC, seven eighty three Hill Street, until our May fifteenth meeting. Okay. Second. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What was that, Route Allen? Seventy eight. Route seventy eight down through Central <laughs> Pennsylvania instead of Route eighty works better. But I think project. I agree. The project for Windmill Lane. Is a really fascinating one. That's one of the great ways to if, if we can fix up Shippies, we can fix up that one. Alan, we're not there yet. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Night. Okay. Moving into, um, excuse me, site, site plan review. The first one is Tower of Southampton, 51 Pond Lane. We have not heard from the uh, applicant any, uh, any update. Can we remove it from the agenda or no? Um, would the board could they deny without prejudice? I don't know what the procedure is because we, we have a pending application, but there's been no um, update. I can find in everything. Significant. Almost time. Good, but mm -hmm. I'm getting some. Hey, this is so new. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, mute yourself. <laughs> Sorry, I'm easily distracted. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't. I don't think we need to deny it to remove it from the agenda. We can remove it from the agenda. If they ask to get put back on, we can put it back on. It would probably seem to get re-advertised at that point, I would think, right? Uh, is the public hearing open? Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, I guess that's a good question. I don't know. No, I don't even, I, we haven't even had a public hearing yet. No, I mean, we, we, s we started SECRA, and it's been absolutely nothing since then. Okay. I, I mean, it's not going to affect the application one way or another. It just comes back on. Like. Yeah, it, I, I don't see any issue whatsoever with striking it from the agenda. Okay. So uh, shall I move that? We strike yeah. this application from the agenda until further notice from the applicant. Perfect. Right. I mean, since there's no public hearing, I think that application being for Town of Southampton, 51 Pond Lane. Can I get a second, please? Second. Seconded. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Okay, great. So Thank you've been you. so patient. <laughs> um, the next site plan review is um, for 22 Window Lane. I just have to run out and retain Mr. Bennett because uh, I didn't realize he was such a force. <laughs> Don't run so fast. <laughs> uh, I, uh, so we have um, we have updated drawings that we present at the ARB. Uh, I wonder if you have that. Sure. Yes. Excuse me, can I have your name for the record, please? Sure, David Silverstein. Thank you. Thank you. David, how are you associated with the project? Uh, I'm my project. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, with so all due respect, you don't you don't have to feel compelled to look at these right now. We, mm -hmm. We've got like a two week oh, okay. rule here, so um, it's, an, it's an easy read. It's not okay.
So did, I'm sorry, did you hand in two extra copies for the board members that aren't here? Uh, I can. Okay, thank you. I can go to the village and get them, don't worry. Okay. We have a folder for you. <laughs> we have them here for you. Thank you. So uh, thank you, members of the board. Uh, this is my second time. Uh, I think um, trying to remember back to the first time, it was quite a while ago. Uh, there were a few comments on the plan. Uh, we've since gone to ARB and heard their comments. And we we've, we've, haven't really changed the footprint materially, except for one request that was made by this board, which was to include a sidewalk. To that end, we moved the property back, the uh, building back, rather, to accommodate a sidewalk through the, through the property. Um, other than that, it's pretty much the same. The second request was to speak to speak to Fire Marshal McNamara about access and emergency, and he he did respond that he's okay with it. And unfortunately, our architect couldn't be here this evening. Um, but I did also review the comprehensive plan that's been approved, you know, just to see how this pro this project fit in. And. So this has been in the village in years. We don't hear the white guy. What do you need? You need something? Yeah. Everybody's happy with it. Oh, is that? Good. As long as they're happy. Hey, happy. Alan. Mr. Can McFarling. Can you, can you, you mute? You have to mute your um, microphone. Alan? I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> I'm not so skilled at this technology. Did it mute? No. <laughs> No. No. All right, let me go. I'll see. Bottom left next to the video. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So without going point by point through the comprehensive plan, just to, you know, a few bullet points. Um, one of the things is to protect the historic site, which we're, we're very much trying to do. Is we, you know, we really like to, to maintain and restore the Rhodes House, as is. Um, maintain a year-round mix of small-scale independent stores, services, and other commercial uses. I think we're, we're doing that also in respect to the hospital moving away um, to, do, to get an approved medical use so we have access to physicians in the village center, uh, I think is complementary to that. Uh, I mentioned the aging population. Um, my mom lives on uh, Willow Street. She's blind goes to the doctors regularly, it would be great if she could come to the village as opposed to, you know, places outside or three and a half miles away. Uh, and then uh, I guess the, th the point that's going to come up is parking. Uh, so, you know, we know we're adjacent to the village lot. I have spoken to Mr. Betts about what his plans are with Shippies because I think there's a lot of opportunity in that lot you know, the, the, the public and private lots to kind of reimagine that as something that makes both of those buildings have more accessible parking. Um, he's not ready to proceed with any conversations about that, but it's something we're interested in doing. The, the new courtyard that appears there, is that something that people could come in and use? Or like what's what's going on in the courtyard? Uh, the the space on Windmill Lane? Yeah, where it says new courtyard, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that, that's intended to be an open public space as it is now. Okay. And I think if, um, <coughs> if you refer to the renderings that I presented the last time, it showed that space as, as being open space. <coughs> Houses the septic, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, we have. We also have a uh, a leaching field underneath that space. Kathy, but have you received any comments from the fire marshal on this? Uh, there were on the pre-submission, I believe. Okay. So I'm not sure that he's updated them. Okay. See. And then some rendering I was looking at because I see a lot of windows in the the new addition that you're mm -hmm. doing, but yeah. on, on one view there are no windows, right? Or uh, on some image that I was looking at today, there were just the structures without windows. Is that on one side? 
Um, or are the windows on both sides? Because I, th I thought it was nice that they mat like matched and looked uh, yeah, historic rather there, than yeah. There's, so there's there's windows in the in the new part on uh, Windmill Lane, and of course all you know all down the uh, the drive there, and those windows would match, and we would do something complimentary to the to the Rhodes House. Okay. And you know we kind of touched on this last time about should it look the same? Should it look different? Right. You know with the ARB we got the sense that it couldn't look that much different. Right. But we are still trying to distinguish the roads house from the new construction. Okay. So the the guidance for a his, you know doing an addition on a historic building is for the addition to complement the the historic portion, but it should be subservient to it, and it should be uh, quote unquote reversible, and it should not mimic the historic portion to the extent where you cannot tell the difference. You're supposed to be able to look at it and say, okay, that was the original house, and this is the addition. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a delicate balance. <laughs> So we think we have something that strikes that balance. Uh, hopefully, the ARB agrees. Um, I get the sense that maybe a few more trips down that road, but okay. we'll get there. So I, I don't know if you saw our report, which was only dated yesterday. So I, I will give you a copy of that. I have not. Um, so um, I'm attaching a uh, the site plan elements that are required by Village Code. We created a checklist and actually um, I was motivated to get that done because I was like, that's what I need to attach for this one, sorry. Um, there's a lot of missing items um, and that will help you go through and see what's missing. Um, there's also some um, guidance in here um, about yeah, where, um, because this plays a part in the surrounding village parking and how people traverse and get behind shippies, for example, um, that is shown on the plans as a right of way, which um, it appears to be owned by the lot to the south, so it really would be an easement, I guess, uh, some kind of agreement between the, the, um, the owners uh, that would be recorded. And then there is also... It, it is, it is uh, needed, yes. Okay. And then there's a right-of-way uh, behind Shippies, I guess, and maybe the, the building behind uh, to the south of that, which would be blocked by a curb that's proposed on your... On your uh, site plan well, so that, well that right that right of way in the deed is in favor of our property so the right of way goes to that curb I mean obviously we don't need that curb we can we can <laughs> eliminate it um, but just for the record it's uh, those rights of, the, those both of those rights away are for our benefit not for the other property's benefit can you submit copies so I can take a look at those mm -hmm. thanks um, I have the deed showing those right well there we, well, there, there we go can I keep them Okay. <laughs> we have a whole computer full. We would also have them put a file. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But I did just highlight what you're speaking of now, right there. Mm -hmm. That should be the actual. Thanks. All the okay. Um, so one of the other comments I have, I mean, this is, um, you know, it's, it's a relatively complicated procedure, and it would be helpful to have separate sheets um, that show the landscaping and the utilities and so forth. Because you know, when this board is looking at it, they need to look at you know the site improvements, what's going to be at grade, what's going to be up below grade, can be confusing on a map, um, you know, of the site plan. Can we um, can we just itemize that? So landscaping. Oh, I have I have it. In oh, there. It's, a, yeah, it's on your yeah, checklist. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, and actually, that's in the memo. It's not something that's required because sometimes it does make sense to have all those things on one plan. But there's a lot going on on this small space. So okay. we think just separating it out. Ooh, I just got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, what does that sound? I sound like a duck. Um, <laughs> A, um, but also just looking at this from the context of how it fits in with the surrounding properties. So I thought it might be helpful um, to have it overlaid on an aerial photograph. So that's that's in here too. Um, What's the double dash line on the cover page? Um, Which one? The double dash. The double. It's, it says it's a curb. Yes, that's an existing curb. Yeah. Oh, existing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And these are IA systems, I guess, on the sanitary? Yeah, everything is IA. Yeah. yeah. So, an ex um, so an updated test hole will be needed. Um, the test, I went through the old one, and it's from 2006, which is really not 
that uh, helpful? I think there is an updated one. Okay, I'll, I'll great. Because will they be above ground and then will they be screened or? Um, I don't know. We don't yeah. have the details on the sanitary system unless yeah. it's the same as the one that was submitted with the pre-submission. So yeah. that's where, you know, when you do a pre-submission and then you do a submission, it's we don't want to go back trying to figure out what is still valid. So that's sort of up to you to provide a complete application that kind of answers all these questions. And um, uh, yeah, so we'll get you. I have a copy actually of um, Dean McNamara's report. Uh, it's a letter dated September 27th, 2022, and I'll make sure that that ends up in the drop box if you don't have it, Alex. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll give it, well, actually, I'll give it to you because I'm not going to be here. So this is allowed yeah. office spaces, correct? No, I think it's less, actually. Oh, well, if you're, count if you're, you're counting the spaces inside roads, it's, it's, it's 10 office spaces in the new construction. And I know that he has roads marked as office, but... You know, the, the thought that I have with, with that is I'd really like to find some sort of um, light retail use. It's a little more open to the public, um, a little French bakery or something that, you know, meets our sanitary code. Mm -hmm. um, but people can walk in and you know, see it. Is, is there, are there studies that can be done to see how a 10 office <coughs> spaces would affect the parking? Well, what the code would require is a, is a specific number Yes. Is, is it? There is a table for that. It there is. Um, yep. One parking spot per 180 square feet in village business zoning um, for that particular yeah. area. For this Tony, I, uh, it's Alan. I, I spoke a minute ago. I can't hear you. Okay. The constructive issues that are in this proposal and the parking is uh, one we have. It, it, it lands in our portfolio. We have to have to deal with it. But the, the um, it seems to me the other issue with design and all that sort of stuff is is not much at stake. It's just a question. Of, this is a unfortunately this is a terrible area of the village. And by terrible, <clears throat> I mean this is where all the water drains from everywhere into Lake Agawa. And I don't want to do this to be obstreperous because I think it's a great idea. To, do this this property constructed through the roads house is a brilliant idea wonderful idea thank you but that's where all the water runs into lake agawam it's under this was a swamp years ago that ran from up past the uh, grocery store down to the swamp which was to the north end of lake agawam which they filled in and so everything that has to do with drainage and swamps and and sanitation everything else will be something we're stuck with whether we want to be in it or not. And so I'm, I'm sorry, Council, to give you anything other than great information on a great idea. But that's going to be a big issue when this gets solved, in my judgment, given what's going on with the village and its plumbing. Thank you. So uh, Vinny Gardiello is our engineer uh, of record on this. Um, he did he did study it. He designed it. The septic was specifically done with these low geo mats so that we would be out of the water table and then we can we can you know run everything through the low nitrogen system. Uh, I believe there is drainage shown as well. There is existing drainage on the lots and the adjacent lots and in the village parking. Um, I haven't. I mean the the building is just damp because it's open. It's open to rainwater now. It's one of the reasons we're kind of anxious to you know, move it along and start doing something to protect the, the, the structures. Um, but I haven't observed any flooding, standing water, you know, on the, on the existing lawn or behind it or around it. So not that it couldn't happen if, you know, if we, we got a big significant rainfall, but I haven't seen it to be a problem. And also one more thing to that end, if um, I'm assuming we're going to put a new foundation under the roads house anyway, if we're concerned, we might want to you know, raise it up 8, 10, 12 inches so that we can, you know, keep it, keep it a little higher. And, you know, we wouldn't be opposed to doing that. Oh, you would, would you raise, you're not talking about raising the entire building, just that portion of the site? Well, we have to raise them, we'd have to raise them together because we okay. want, we want similar floor heights. Um, but we're, we're significantly below um, rotations to the north now. 
So I don't think even raising a foot or so would, would really make a visual difference. You know, but we can show that in our renderings both ways. So one of the other things that I, I note is that um, a short EAF was submitted, which is what's required for an unlisted action, but I would recommend that the board consider a full EAF for this. Um, so that way, you know, we can delve further into some of the environmental uh, constraints on this property. It is in the Lake Agawam uh, watershed area, so it is, you know, you have to take a hard look at the water quality um, of any any application in that in the um, in the watershed area. Um, so, um, and I would just encourage you know pulling all this together and and not submitting things piecemeal, so that way the board can look at one thing, you know, look at it all at one time. Um, it's fine to submit the deed, though. I mean, I know that's something that you want to look at. So. Okay. But I would, I would say it would be great to have a full package of, you know, all of these details. You, you might not go and do the whole landscaping plan yet. You know, that's, that's a lot to do until you get a little further along. But um, at least to get, you know, what is the basic concept, you know, definitely where are the parking, where is the parking going to go. ADA, um, the fire marshal recommended two, at least two ADA accessible parking spaces. Um, if you are going to... Uh, allow the access behind shippies, then you're going to lose two parking spaces that are proposed. So it's another, it's more well, well, again, parking the, relief. So the easement ends at our property. Okay. So it, it's, it's, it's at okay. our discretion Not, what we do yeah. with that. Uh, okay. Well, while we're on the subject, I'm going to need the maps and surveys that go with this because I need to follow the meets and bounds. Okay. And then, and then once we have like a more complete plan, it w that's when an engineer, our engineer, would look at uh, the village engineer. Sorry, Alan. Sorry. Can I add something about? I, I just want to say yeah, that, uh, sorry about my my email here. Uh, Shippies is important, but there's there's a major facility, major in the village of Southampton, in between Shippies. And here, which is the what I call the bicycle store, wonderful guy. And so, however you work out, Alan, you muted yourself in the middle of the conversation. So the the bicycle store, it looks like his lot actually does extend into that area, which I was thinking was part of the right of way, and that's not part of a right of way. No. I understand now. No, okay. The, the, um, I, I I don't want to comment on the activities of the bicycle store. I I know Rick is a beloved member of the village community, um, but I will say that his use has expanded well beyond what what his building can handle, and that's something that he's going to need to work out. He's using parking on our lot. He's got bicycles on a lot he has dumpsters on our lot um, at some point he has to contain his activities to something that's reasonable for that size building I just take a step way back from a common sense point of view 11 medical offices 10 10 all right 10 medical offices and a retail space minimum of two employees for each of those and then the people the patients and the patrons coming to these where are these people gonna park well, they're not going to park in these spaces for sure. Can I ask some questions um, in reference to the parking? I was hoping to get some help with. Can you? Okay. Yeah, so, Tony, I'm all for what, sorry, what this is going. This is a great goal. But if you want to compare people not going to wherever the new hospital ends up and everything else compared to bicycles, I'm sorry, given the community and how we go forward and the kids, the bicycles may win by the margin. I mean, we got to deal with this. We got to get everybody reasonably accommodate. And how we, so, if how this proposed mop is full, how does your ailing mother get to this to her doctor's appointment? Well, she can't drive. She gets dropped off. But you get my point, right? She's gonna have to park over by. She's not the bank. She, she can't see, let alone. One will have to park over by the bank or over by Rite Aid and walk over. Or up at the street. Well, again, I started. I started the conversation with the comprehensive plan and what it says about partnering with with the public parking facilities and the and the private owners, and how that could work better. 
I, I went so far as to meet a neighbor and have the same conversation with him. I wasn't encouraged to do anything. It doesn't mean we still can't examine and I, I can share the aerial view of what goes on in that area now. There's plenty of land, there's plenty of area, and it's, it, it's a bit helter skelter. Yeah. Can I talk about that a little bit? Sure, please. please. Yeah. So, sorry about that. So I, I think when you have the aerial um, and you overlay it, it'll be helpful because you'll see the last four parking spaces here adjoin what's a municipal parking area. And these, these last four spaces are not possible because there's village spaces that block them. Um, so I think that'll be clear once you have the aerial. And you'll have to give this plan a little bit more thought and see how c can we integrate this plan with the municipal parking area? Because if you have to eliminate like six village parking spaces to get four on-street parking spaces, it's probably not in the best interest to do that because it's going to result in a net loss of the parking. And then when we, um, I know there's some calculations here that, that are crossed out, but when we calculate the parking here, um, what we have to do is determine what the existing size of the building is and what the existing parking on site is, and that establishes to what extent anything is grandfathered in. And then from there, you could determine based on the size of what's being added, what addition, the additional parking requirement would be. Um, I understand that there's probably going to be a parking variance here because of the, the size of the, the parcel. Um, it's very common in the Village Business District that not all parking spaces can be accommodated on site, which is why we have municipal parking in a downtown uh, area. Uh, but I think establishing what that number uh, is, is going to be important. And I think having a plan that integrates with the municipal parking that you would join on a couple sides, mm -hmm. I think is going to be key. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. And again, just referring to pages 55, 56 in the, in the comprehensive plan, this is exactly what that talks about. And looking at this aerial photo, I mean, it's just the, the whole area back there, you know, the private spaces, the public parking spaces, it, it, it's just kind of a mess. And, it's, and it's, con it's contrary to this comprehensive plan that's been adopted, and it, and it doesn't help any of these businesses on Windmill Lane. The plan is 100% correct in what it calls out about this, and I'm here to work with everybody to, to try to do something better and accommodate this use, which I think is, is also um, complementary to the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. Great. So, so this this uh, this um, green area here that's in this map. This is a very nice map, by the way. I like the bird's eye view because it really does help you picture it, right? Um, that I believe is owned by the village. That is, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then all of this is owned by the village, or is that? I'm trying uh, to I, be I believe that the roadway is a village, and then the, the yes. main parking lot is behind that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so. What, what's private are the spaces on either side of the of the uh, of the right of way and the two rights of way. Okay. Okay. There's a lady in there. So, um, Alan, you should mute yourself again. <laughs> um, so, actually, this is exactly why a radius map that shows you know who owns what and what you know what uh, it's used for would be really helpful as part of the when you overlay it and I would keep it very simple of where you're proposing you know just have like a, what you're proposing where you're proposing parking and then how that fits within the context of the existing land uses and ownership just and and think about the big picture there well if you wouldn't mind let me ask a question as far as reimagining this section in the parking and benefiting these four properties on windmill lane how would we go about coming up, you know, collectively coming up with a better parking situation in general. Less office space. Well, less office space is, is great, but there's still four buildings that have a significant amount of business activity. When Shifty, when Shifty's is reactivated, it will be more activity than it ever had. Right. I, I'm confident that they're going to run it differently. Mm -hmm. uh, so, How so? It'll be open during the day? I think they'll attract more customers than they probably have in the past. Okay. Just my... So that exacerbates the problem even more. It's it which is, is, a, why, it, is yeah, it's a village. It really is a village board question. It's not right. you know this planning board reviews applications and if there are solutions that are creative creative you know to work with other property owners and to work with the village then but that's something that the you know it has to be worked out separately. Um, but this board should be receptive mm -hmm. and helpful to applicants in trying right. to, to fix an issue like this. Agreed. So I, I do think that we can accommodate such a request and, and try to be something like a liaison to the trustees if there is an improvement to be made also on village property. 
Yeah, I mean, could there be walkways that the village improves that connect these parking, the municipal parking, to the businesses? Is that something that has been the purview of the trustees, or? Well, I, I I think there could be there could certainly be a solution where the improvements on this property, you know, make sense in the context of of the village's property, and if and if the village's property is is not being used in the most beneficial way, then we should take a look at that. And uh, the walkways are specifically also called out in the comprehensive plan as as being something that the mm -hmm. that the village is uh, is deficient on. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, we we need you to come and introduce yourself. And I, if you want, you can you can always sit here and introduce yourself. Since you have been speaking, it would be great if you came and gave your name on the record. Hi, I'm Shannon Bradley, uh, permit agent for the property. And um, I just wanted to say that I've been reading the comprehensive plan, and I also understand what you're saying about the number of offices and how that might you know, be frightening as far as the amount of parking. Um, we do have some aerial photos that we presented that do show, uh, have the numbered buildings. It's 16, 18, 22. Uh, there's 20, let's see, I have to look on my paper there. 36 is twice by Shippies. They have a garage, and they have the frontal property, and then there's Capital One Bank. So it does go. Um, if you start from um, down the line of the property, all the buildings, the frontage of the road, have driveways and alleyways that lead to back small parking lots. The village parking lot um, is also back there as well, the smaller one. The photos are there. So if you did or were able to obtain cross-partnership agreements with your neighbors, um, and if that were able to be cleaned up as a whole, it would be beautiful for the community. If you could just view the pictures that are there, you'll see um, it does promote in the guidelines to lessen the amount of entry and exits onto the main road uh, for the safety of the public and the pedestrians and for the guests and the clients of all the buildings to limit that. So if you did use, you know, let's say an entryway, if we could work together and get suggestions as to how to make that work and have possible cross agreements, which would have to be entertained prior to submission, um, it could be lovely as compared to what's there now. And I think that we could all agree that something, you know, to be excited about would be cleaning up and making that area for all businesses there in that visit, uh, business village business zoning area to be conformed. It's very choppy and very confusing. It so. really mm -hmm. is. Yeah. And dangerous. Yeah, yeah. And so and to take into consideration terrain. if you did like a mathematical equation that Alex was bringing up as far as the code, I mean I could quote code all day as far as it says you know 180 square feet, da, 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 da. the building pre-existing let's say it was um, if I get my math, it was uh, oof, 5,000 something square feet. If you did the math of gross area and how many spaces are appropriate, we, we might technically, with the 60% waiver in place for pre-existing, might even come close to the amount. But it would be better not to have to quote and argue codes and you know tit for tat and this and that, like the lawyers prior were doing, and just say, look, look at the benefit of how beautiful this could be if we could come up together with a plan from your advice, your suggestions, the stuff that we need to do, and come up with something very nice for the community. Um, then 11 or 10 office or, or medical would make more sense. Um, Shippies makes a lot of sense with their parking. Let's say they wanted to add on seating in the future, which is a huge possibility. They're going to have to come before you. They're going to have to go through parking. They're going to want to be amicable towards that cross-parking agreement when the time comes. Any other business that needs to fix up there as well, if they ever want to do anything and needs more parking, then they're going to want to be amicable towards that as well. So if we could maybe have a conversation and bring that up in that point of view and see it a little bit that way, I think that it makes more sense. That's just my opinion. That's basically all I wanted to say. And just to comment on the number of medical spaces, you know, as, as somebody who's looking at this 
property is being it was a little costly to buy it's going to be very costly to to build i don't know at the end of the day if two medical offices will, will go into that space i have to look at it from the standpoint of okay worst case scenario if i have a medical office that's super super affordable will a physician say yes i want to move my practice into the into the village you know i think for a physician it's great i think for a patient it's great um, but that's not to say that while Cornell won't come in and say, yeah, you know, we'll take the whole thing, it's just going to be one practice. But I think at the end of the day, the parking is going to go toward by the square footage of the space. So whether it's, you know, 10 spaces or two spaces or one single space, I don't know if that's going to change the ratios. I think as you look at the property in the context of the surrounding area, you might find that we, we talked about the sidewalk. Maybe it makes sense to continue that sidewalk to the edge of your property to connect to the municipal parking area. And if it makes looks like maybe there's a missing crosswalk or a missing connection to tie this into the adjoining properties, maybe that's something that you could show as something for the potential. Maybe that's something um, that the village could consider. Uh, yeah, agreed. I mean, look. Ideally for me, I'd like to take these buildings, start with a clean sheet of paper, and say the ideal parking, ingress, egress, you know, this would, this would be the ideal. My question, you know, again, I asked it to the adjacent property owners, didn't get a great response, so I'll have to ask the same question to the village. What is the participation? I can't go onto other people's property and the village's property and start, you know, bulldozing and paving. Everybody has to be involved. I just don't know how to get that done. The area that's green, I think it would be important to know if that is uh, village parkland. What area that's green? The, the I'm east, sorry, to the east. The, 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 mm -hmm. This area here. Can you see? Yeah. It? yeah. Yeah. So you're saying that that's owned by the village? It is. Yes. Yeah. It's not, um, that parcel actually includes the um, it's a municipal parking area that also includes the art center. Okay. So giant parking. It's a giant uh, lot that's used for multiple purposes. And to the north of there? To the north is a small, the one that's directly behind rotation from Chippy is a small village piece that's mm -hmm. uh, grass. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that's the one that Kathy was referring to. Oh, me too. Oh. Yeah, so they're, they're you're, connected. You're, you're, looking at a, you're looking at a much bigger picture. Yes, yeah, so, mm -hmm. so yeah. behind the art center, there's a, a considerable, uh, considerably large grass area. So the grass area to the east of the back of rotations is owned by the village? Mm -hmm. And the... A portion. And what's oh, yeah. in between rotations and shippies? It looks like grass right now. There's a strip of grassland that has some... Owned by? Shippies. Shippies own two lots. Okay. They're building in the vacant parcel in between. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, and I, and I know they have intentions of doing something to activate that parcel, which will and create a bigger demand for parking. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is it safe to say that the property line is sort of that paved area behind Shippies straight across the back of rotations and? Yes, that's over. a property line with it. With that's why the, the overlay is gonna be helpful. Yeah, that, that's, uh, well, that's actually on the site plan. That, that would be the, that would end at the easement. So it would be item C on the uh, survey to the east. Okay. That would be that paved area. And then east of that would be the village property, which is marked on the survey as well, on the site plan. Okay. Any other questions? Well, I, I actually, I was wondering if like cross hatching, like pedestrian crosswalks or something that the village could yeah. create. Like, is that, that's the village's area to, if you were to just for safety set up areas where pedestrians could cross if they want to get to the, any of those businesses from the common, yeah. Property, then, yeah, yeah. That would be the village's responsibility. Yeah. So I guess, my next question is, if we, if we were to do a new overlay, show where we thought 
you know, a parking plan would be that would accommodate these these three or four properties. Uh, I'm not sure if the property to the south factors in. They have a bit of parking, but I'm assuming we should include it regardless. What would be the steps to for the village to make that come to pass? Is there a budget for it? Is it something that it would take years to get approved? And Do you have like a coordinated parking plan between multiple properties? Where that green space might be turned into parking. Yeah, or walkways. Right, if, if we walkways. could easily walk from a common, the municipal parking lot to any of those three with, or four proper businesses. with proper yeah, sidewalks with, with, and curbs. Yeah, and, and cross hatching so yeah. you could have an area where a pedestrian walks because there'll be a lot more cars there going back and forth, presumably. It's, I mean, it's a public private partnership and it would be with the village trustees. So I guess coming here and kind of talking about, you know, the, the kind of the vision for all the shared parking and how this would, you know, be an improvement overall. Um, and then, you know, get the input from the planning board and possibly go back to the trustees and see if this is something that could be entertained. Um, how did Alex? that happen? Yeah. Is it with an application or what, like, you, I, how do you do I that? Don't. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little different. I mean, it yeah. just has to get on the agenda and start a conversation. Yeah, it, it probably would be a, a separate application to the trustees, um, but I, I was just, I was looking at the GIS and it looks like that little grassy area is a separate lot than the larger village lot. Yes. So we'll have to see if there are any restrictions on, on that lot before that could be contemplated. Um, and and I would, I would. I don't know what should happen first. Whether, you know, this board should see a plan that it thinks makes sense before the trustees are approached, or if it makes sense to find out if there's any willingness on behalf of the trustees uh, before this board starts going down that road. Um, I, I don't know what to recommend on that. Well, why don't we do it this way? If if we can find out if there's any CNRs on on those village lots because it could be a non-starter to your point right yeah if we could see a, you know if there's if there are restrictions then it's a non-starter if there aren't restrictions um, you know we'll go ahead and diagram the plan um, I'll you know I'll speak to uh, John and Rick again and see what their you know what their feelings are uh, you know Rick again he has some concerns because he's you know he's kind of blown out of his space so maybe in this plan we can accommodate some of the things that he needs um, and if we can get everybody's needs in there and present it to the trustees, my concern is, um, you know, this house needs help quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, this project has to get done if we're going to try to save the structure. And I, I just am a little hesitant to go down a rabbit hole where it's going to take five years to get something approved. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't get that done. I'm less concerned about the larger village lot. I'm, I'm just concerned about that smaller green lot. Just I would just want to be sure that there's no restriction that it remain green or some sort of open space that's not paved. Right. And the other concern is there are um, there are septic pools from those other two buildings in that green space. Oh, okay. Which is something that um, just again, you know, Agawam Lake is. You know, the the previous applicants are you know are, are dead on. I mean, it is a problem. This is. These properties are probably big contributors because none of them are are new septic systems, and nobody's put a dime into them. Okay. So that's another thing that I think in the same conversation is okay. Well, yep. what are we do? What are we doing with these properties, especially a restaurant? Um, and not not to pick on anybody, it's just a concern. Uh, you know, what do we do to kind of consolidate this, get alternative systems in until the sewers go in, have something that we know we're not we're not contributing to. The problem. Okay. It was a pleasure to work with your brother. I wish I was there. Sounds like fun. Okay, I won't bore you. No, you're not boring. Yeah. Okay. I think this could be a good can of worms to open for that section of the village. Well, if you want to discuss any. Um, coordination I think either Alex Alex and I could probably help with that I would bring it up yeah. to the trustees as soon as possible just to get it on their radar is it is there is there anything wrong with that just to get their no no absolutely not hmm? yeah and even absolutely. if you it has to stay green Informal. couldn't there be improvements around it 
I think, I believe, I don't know, I'm a researcher, but I, I believe uh, that the, there's, a, there's an actual trust fund for off-street parking um, through the Board of Trustees is who you apply for that with. I, I'm not sure if I understand. There's supposed to be. Right? So I think that <laughs> this might actually, actually fall. Concept. It's kind of like it's social a concept. Um, <laughs> I find these things, I don't know where I find them, but it's, I believe it's under 116-29 and that that might be a way to open the conversation or something. I mean, it is a beautiful area to consider using those monies and maybe if that's where I read some contributions just like the other funds that exist, like the park fund, you were saying, you know, I mean, I know they all exist, that that could be something they do except in lieu of parking, you know, like, oh, you could make a contribution to this trust fund and then, you know, this is where that money may go. You know, it's an improvement for the community, and it, that's one way maybe this conversation could be started. That's not uncommon in other municipalities, where they have uh, payment in the parking or pile up, um, where the people in downtown or municipal areas can't provide on site parking, but they contribute to a off, on, off street parking for a municipal parking spot and improvements to um, municipal parking. And maybe that's necessary here, where there's a joint municipal parking to make this layout. Mm -hmm. And it's in our guidelines. It's written. I'm like I'm not making up the rules. We actually have it written within our codes, and it's called it, it's called obviously it makes me it's called payment no parking. So it is something that does exist within our codes that were written by our village, and so it would be something that we would be, you know, not taking advantage of, but using or applying um, to for benefit. To yeah, for for actually the right reasons. And so if that was something that we had to refer to, it's in the 2013 guidelines and it also got carried over into the 2022 guidelines. So it does exist there in wording and print written by, I forget the author, but it is there. So it's not just other towns, we have it as well. Okay, so that's that's something it's a conversation yeah, opener we'll for whoever, it, whatever board would need to. You know, certainly if there is a budget that. allocation for it, and we can, you know, we can come up with plans that streamlines the process quite a bit. If not, yeah. you know, as we say, it's just a mishigas right now with the trustees. So we'll have to parse our way through it. Hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just uh, for the purpose of um, housekeeping, um, I, should this be adjourned to the next meeting or the 15th? Uh, if you wouldn't mind, let's put it on for the next meeting. Okay. Um, just if nothing else, if we, can, if we can complete your checklist by then, we'll submit it, knowing that we have other hurdles to get past. Okay. So the next meeting would be May the 1st. Um, just oh, it's, it's less than two weeks. I don't know if that's going to be enough time for it to be reviewed. If you're able to provide it by. Uh, if, if not, we'll, we'll, we'll come and adjourn. Well, it, will, it will not. We're trying to get toward having submissions two weeks in advance yeah, anyway, exactly. so that won't work. Yeah. It'd have to be the 17th. Okay. The 15th. 15th. With oh. submissions by the 1st. The 15th. 15th. Sorry. 15th. Today's the 17th. We'll see the submissions will just be again pre like a pre submission yes. work session because yeah. the actual you know the whole application. Well, it's not a pre submission, but it is a work session. It's a work, it's work session. session. Yeah. Okay. But if you want the best from us, we need time to. Sure. Look at things. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay. Have a great night. So you you gonna make a motion to adjourn? No or? motion. Yeah. Wait. Oh, a motion to adjourn this. To the May fifteenth meeting. Yeah. So moved. Oh, seconded. All in favor? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't make the motion. Uh, I can't make the motion. Can you make the right. motion? Yep. Yeah. I'd like to move that we uh, adjourn the. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, wait. Okay. I wrote online. 22 minutes. 22 minutes. Okay. 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 Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. We adjourn, right? Indeed. We haven't adjourned the meeting. I'll vote yet. for it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, minutes. March 10th minutes. I haven't had a chance to read them. It. It's actually March 20th, it should be. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's March 20th. The 10th is like a Saturday. I think that's a typo. Okay. Um, I, I think there might have been a problem with the um, 
emails. But I'll take care of it. And make sure you guys get a notice. Okay, we can do it at the next meeting. Okay. Um. So I just want to look at the future meetings. The schedule we have here, laid out here, is okay. fine. I just want to. We've had a great time. That's what I was going to help. Can, can you move? Can you move, Alan? Alan? Oh, so. Must you? Because I can't hear the board. Please, thank you. I'm um, sorry. Could you say that again? Because I, I could not hear it. I just wanted to review the future meetings schedule. Um, we have May 1st, May 15th, then Monday, June 5th. And I just want to remind everybody that the 19th is the day that we would normally have a meeting hey. is Juneteenth, and that meeting will be in June. Okay. So oh, people can just one thing to point out. I think have all of the applications except for Hetty Creek been adjourned to May 15th? Is is that the only application on the next meeting? I yeah, I, I, I think it's so. just Hetty Creek. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So that sounds like a good reason to not have a meeting in six days, basically, right? It's six yes. it's six business days. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so should we just ask Linda if she can come in on the 15th? And she might not be ready anyway. So I think, yeah. Okay. What do you think, Alice? We can, this board I think could vote to adjourn the Hetty Creek matter to the 15th. Yeah, I, I doubt there's anything urgent happening there. Yeah, too. And there are no pending applications that are. No, you heard them all tonight. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think there's any more that we have pending that um, that are in the docket for those, yeah. right? Yeah. No, we I don't. Tony, okay. you have the full roster. Don't uh, advance it yet. So, are 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 you planning to make a motion to cancel the May first meeting? So moved. Oh, no. um, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm very sensitive to serving the public, and I just want, because I was confronted about the Fowler Street application, it apparently sat for months, and I didn't know about it. So I just want to make sure that we're, by canceling that meeting, we're not no, postponing not, anything that we should be doing. There are no, as far as I know, there are no pending applications okay. that would Great. be. Then I would like to move, due to lack of activity, that we adjourn, I, that we cancel our Monday, May 1st, 2023 meeting. Give a second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So do we have to adjourn Hedy the Hedy Creek? Creek well, to the, you adjourn yeah. to the 15th. Okay. Exactly. You want to do a motion? Yeah. Just yes. I'd like to move that we um, adjourn the application for Hedy Creek lot line modification from May 1st to May 15th. All in favor? I mean, second. 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 Yes, second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And finally, I'd like to move that we close the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. <laughs>